beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed if you believe it say amen let me talk about two concepts and then we'll build number one write this word down waiting w-a-i-t-i-n-g waiting one word that gets believers scared in the kingdom many people have preached all kinds of messages but tonight i want us to examine this concept I do my best by the leadership of the Spirit to make sure that we leave no stone unturned as far as the journey to our destiny and our success is concerned. Waiting. One of the hardest things that can happen to a believer is to enter a season of waiting. It can be so frustrating, it can be so painful that it will take the ability and the strength of the spirit for you to survive that season. Please take note of what I'm sharing. No matter how anointed you are, no matter how great you are, if there is a prophecy upon your life, hear me, between that prophecy and the manifestation of that prophecy, a time will come in your life when you will step into this season of waiting. And it's important I teach you how it works in the kingdom. Otherwise, when you enter that season, you may be so confused and you will abort destiny. Not knowing what is happening behind the scenes. Is somebody getting blessed already? Because many of us right now are in this phase as I speak right now. There are individuals who are at these periods of their life and truly they are confused. Because this season rattles your convictions. Everything you have believed comes under the test when you come to this season. Your ideologies, your beliefs, your prayer life, your dexterity in the spirit, your endurance, everything you have ever acquired through the world will come under test. And if you cannot stand that test, brothers and sisters, you may stand from here and see Canaan, but you may never enter it. The fact that you have seen the vision, the fact that you have had the dream, is no guarantee. The fact that God spoke to you, is no guarantee that you will arrive there. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? You saw yourself a mighty evangelist. You saw yourself a mighty apostle. In your dreams, you see crusades. You see a lot of things in your dreams. You have seen that you are a financial apostle. You've seen yourself doing mighty things for the kingdom. I want to announce to you tonight that between the prophecy and its manifestation are stages and principles. And one of those stages is called the period of waiting. And if you do not understand this, brothers and sisters, you may never arrive there. 
Proverbs 13 verse 12. Proverbs 13 verse 12. Let's hurry up tonight. Open your heart. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible explains to us, you see, look up please. I've spent my life not just studying on the kingdom, but studying about man. Because I'm a man. And I, I like to know what, what my, the components of my, my, my creation, my build up. I like to know what my strengths are. Not as a, my personality, but the general man. I like to know who man is. What are his limitations? What are his predicaments? What are the vulnerabilities that can befall man? This revelation helps me to know where to lean on God more. Hallelujah. And here and there I have found certain inevitable weaknesses that are fabricated in man. And it will take us understanding those limitations. And leaning on the strength of God to supplement for our inadequacies at that time. Otherwise we will not last. One of it is this simple scripture that many of us have read again and again. One to read. Hope deferred makes what? When you postpone hope. When expectations are not met. The Bible says it can affect your spirit man. Are you reading it here? The word heart, there's the same word spirit. When you hope for certain things, by our natural design, we love winning. We love achieving. We love accomplishing things. Are you getting my point? We love seeing a sign of progress in our lives. Is someone getting what I'm, I'm, I'm saying tonight? The Bible says, when that hope that we have, that drives us into destiny, when those expectations that we have are not achieved, when it is deferred, that means when it is postponed, the Bible says it has an effect, not just in your physical body. It does not just create fatigue in your physical body. It affects even your spirit man. It said, but when desire cometh, it is a tree of life. When you achieve your goals and you hold on to it, there is the joy that fulfillment and accomplishment brings in every man. Hallelujah. That means when the waiting period between your prophecy and its manifestation gets too long, if you do not understand the technology and the provision that has been made in the spirit to carry you through that process, you may never arrive there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Although anointed, although born again, the Bible tells us that there is, a, there is an inadequacy that is in man. That man does not have the, the ability to endure, to suffer long forever. That means a time comes in the equation of your life when your patience gets stretched out. No matter how good and godly you are. That means there must be a technology in the spirit that is able to hold you and take you to the place of destiny. Say amen. Now, there are two dimensions to waiting and I want us to look at it. Number one is that waiting so that we don't confuse ourselves here. Waiting can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. We must get this. It's very important. Waiting can be a demonic strategy. Please write it. It can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. I must balance this straight up. So that many of us do not sit down and allow the devil delay our destinies forever. And then get convinced. Because if the word of God is not rightly divided, the devil can use that it is written. And convince many of us now. 
who should be preparing for miracle service next week and say, Lord, an end comes to this. There are certain periods of waiting that are not divine. They are not initiated by God at all. Are you getting my point now? They are strategies from the kingdom of darkness to delay and limit us from entering our prophetic destiny. That kind of waiting is called delay. Write it down. The name given to that kind of waiting is delay. Delay. Satan's strategy to limit you and hinder you and stop you. Paul said, once and again, I desire to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Satan can hinder men. Then number two, the second dimension is that delay can be a divine orchestration. Please get this. You must get this. That there are two dimensions to look at waiting in the kingdom. All of our teaching is within the context of the kingdom. That there is a waiting process and period that is orchestrated by the kingdom of darkness to limit us. And the name given to it is delay. But that there is a waiting period. There are these seasons that are divine orchestrations. Lamentations 3.25. Can we look at it very quickly? Is someone getting blessed already? Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, guys. You soon go and sit down. Okay, just go, just go, just go. Oh, bless you. So you can be writing. It's very important that you write. Lamentations 3.25. Are we there? Everyone, please look up and read before you continue writing. One to read. The Lord is good unto them that do what? Not wait on Him. Wait for Him. Wait for Him. It's a very difficult thing to wait. Very, very difficult. And this divinely orchestrated period of waiting is called process. Write it in the kingdom. It's called process. Process. So there is a difference between waiting as a process to your destiny and waiting as delay from the kingdom of darkness to destroy you. And you must sustain the ability to discern so that you know whether to align and receive grace and might from God or to stand and take authority over the activities of darkness. Hallelujah. Process. Very important. You will come to this period of your life. Whether you pray for it or not, it's part of the things that you will find. And I'll be showing you from scripture how that many people messed up when they got to this season. Let me give you one example. Remember the nation of Israel. Hallelujah. They came out. There was a prophecy given to Moses. Even Moses, their leader, did not enter the promised land. Look up. Did you know that God never told Moses he was going to die on the way? Is that true? The prophecy that was given to Moses was that he was going to lead the people from the land of bondage into the land flowing with milk and honey. God never told him somebody will take out the baton. But between Egypt, brothers and sisters, and Canaan, only two people from that generation were able to make it. Only two people. They all had the prophecy. They rejoiced. They joined Moses after the, the, the parting of the Red Sea to sing. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider, because it had not stretched their patience too much, but they came to a point. Look at all the things they did in the wilderness, because they did not understand this operation. And listen, if you do not learn the lesson, you will do the same thing. It's easy to talk about them. Thank you, Jesus Christ. 
a few thoughts about waiting that I want you to note. Number one, in the kingdom, please make sure you note that we are talking with respect to the kingdom. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. For many of us, our concept of waiting is to stand still, known to be motionless. But that's not the way it works in the kingdom. When you enter the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it does not mean absence of progress. It also does not mean absence of advancement. That when you are in the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it's not the same thing as saying you are in one spot, not making progress. To you, you think you are in one spot because there is no physical evidence to measure your advancement. But I'm telling you right now that behind the scene, there is a lot of advancement taking place. Number two, waiting in the kingdom is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. I'm taking our time to read it because I don't want us to miss it. You'll notice in the last few weeks I've been teaching very carefully, reading almost directly from my notebook here because I don't want us to confuse and miss words and then for our online people, I want them to follow on thoroughly. Waiting is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. Number three. Look up. I want to explain something now about waiting. One of the biggest things I've seen in the lives of people, and please listen, God is about to minister directly to us now, is that because we have expectations for something great about our life, we postpone all of our joy and gladness and shift it. Are you getting my point? To the future so that we will take advantage of that joy when we arrive. And then we starve ourselves of joy during the waiting period. Are you getting my point? But the Bible tells us that the vehicle that carries strength in the kingdom is joy. I want to show you why a lot of people never arrive. During the waiting process, one of the things that we are vulnerable to face is the absence or the diminishing of joy. I'll give you an example. A brother wants to get married. Or a lady wants to get married. God has told you you will get married. Is that true? And you pass all the joy. And say on that glorious day. When I wear my suit. You will see the dance I've never danced before. I will dance David's dance and laugh. But between now and that point. You will see the lady looking frowny. Angry at everybody. Why? Why is God delaying me? And so we kill our joy. Are you getting what I'm saying? And we wait and we pack up everything and we keep pushing the joy to the future. And we never get blessed with the moment. That expectation kills our joy. We cry day and night. Oh God, when will I become a millionaire? I'm seeing it. Let me just enter this thing. And you see joyless believers. Angry and offended at God. Note this tonight. That waiting should never postpone your joy. You can be joyful while waiting. Never wait until you arrive. Your joy gets complete when you arrive. But that joy should start and go with you all the way. Because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is the strength that you will need. There is a difference between joy and happiness. If I give you one million now, there is every reason to be happy. That's not joy. Hallelujah. But joy is of the Holy Ghost. It's the strength 
and the sense of rest and merriment that comes based on the conviction of God's integrity. So when there is no physical evidence, you are joyful. He said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Look up, please. How many of us have killed our joy? There are so many people. You see a lady of 20 years looking like 50. Why? Say, I'm not in a relationship. God spoke to me. Am I the worst person in the world? No joy. You stand outside tomorrow morning and watch all the people that move. 90% of people are joyless people. They get up in the morning, there's no sense of joy and merriment. You ask them why. And they give you all kinds of legitimate reason. And they believe that they are justified on the strength of those reasons not to be joyful. And they never arrive at their destinations. Is God speaking to someone tonight? That's what changed our parents. Many of them, when they got married like us, they were happy people. Eventually, their expectations. They expected that when the first child is five years, they would have been millionaires, established in their dream jobs, having their own homes. Unfortunately, they had wishes, but they did not understand the principles that will make it happen. So 15 years down the line, they are still crying for rent. There's nothing there. And you find your father old and angry. Now, don't insult him. It's the frustration, the pain and the bitterness that has been fast forwarded. Every new year, people are happy. Do you know why they are happy? Because it makes them forget about the previous year. And for the first one week, they dance. Many churches have all kinds of thanksgiving. By February, everybody is angry. Oh Lord, not again. Will this year pass without the child coming? Oh Lord, so this is how the husband will not come. This is how my admission will not come again. And then our joy. The devil keeps sucking out every ounce of joy. And by the middle of the year, everyone is already frustrated and gassed out spiritually. You must sustain a revelation and a technology in the spirit to make sure that part of the things that suffer of all the things that will suffer during this waiting period your joy should not be one of them are you getting what i'm saying because your joy will culminate to your strength god is speaking to someone tonight waiting in the kingdom is an acknowledgement of divine timing when you wait in the kingdom when you follow through that period you are acknowledging that god works with times and seasons and that you submit yourself to the process of how god makes men great you are everything everything is you you are everything everything joy waiting is an acknowledgement of divine timing everybody say divine timing say after me there is a season in my life and destiny when I will manifest say one more time there is a season and a timing there is a season of showing forth there is a season of manifestation. There is a season of display. Yes. You must recognize that there is a season. Brothers and sisters, it's called due season. Everyone say due season. Due season. The second word I want us to consider tonight before I begin to build is the word impatience write it down impatience what is impatience
patience that has been exhausted. Patience that has been exhausted. Tonight I speak like prophet Elijah that that cruise of oil that is left will not run dry. There is a technology that will refill it tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, impatience is deadly and is dangerous to your destiny. Write it down and underline it. Impatience is deadly. I, I think that's one of the greatest keys, in my opinion. One of the greatest keys that the devil has used to destroy Africans, Nigerians, and young people in general. Impatience. Impatience. What does it mean to be impatient? Impatience means getting ahead of God. Getting ahead of God. That's what it means to be impatient. You run ahead of God. You run ahead of His timing for your life. Impatience is a dangerous thing. God is speaking to us tonight. Because many of us are where we are at this point of our lives because of impatience. There are many of us that stress is almost killing us right now because of impatience. Hallelujah. Very, very important. You are a young lady. You are just 21. You want to kill yourself. If I don't marry by 2014, let it not be that I'm a Christian. And you are yoking yourself. You fasted for two weeks, which is supposed to be wonderful if it were for a just cause. But at 21, there's all kinds of pressure. And you can't wait. There's no, there's no patience. Impatience has driven many of us into all sorts of things. Everybody say, I receive grace to be patient. Abraham was a man in scripture who the tragedy of impatience caught up with him. Just write the scripture. We may not read it for time's sake. I want to hurry up and I want us to finish very fast. In Genesis chapter 16 from verse 1 to 4. Well, let's just, let's just look at it very quickly. Genesis 16, 1 to 4. That man, Abraham, God had spoken to him. Now it was taking too long the result was not coming. And the Bible says in the 16th chapter, Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. So this was an issue of barrenness versus the promise of God that he would be the father of all nations. And she had a what? Please read. And she had what? And that handmaid was an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. I want to show you the danger of impatience. Every time impatience begins to grow in your life, you are about to wreck and jeopardize your destiny. Because very soon, there will be something around you that can be an option. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people have missed out on God's best for them because they could not wait. Two days to enter God's best. We made all kinds of decisions in our lives. Now Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord had restrained me. Are you seeing her interpretation? That God had restrained from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid, that it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham did what? Because Abraham had been eyeing the girl since. It's just that he didn't have the courage. How will he now tell his wife? Are you getting my point now? Impatience will create pictures around your life. If by August a godly brother does not come, God is my witness. I will go anywhere. Even if it's my village and carry anybody. The Bible says, Sarah told Abraham, 
I'm sure they have had quarrels and quarrels. And Sarah said, okay, this is a handmaid. She's younger than me. She can still be fruitful. Go ahead and sleep with her. And Abraham said, now you are talking. Abba, now you are talking. Let's, let's make this promise come to pass. Abraham did not argue. The young lady did not argue. Guess what? God too didn't say anything. The fact that you are doing things wrong and going ahead does not mean you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Did you see that the lady got pregnant? The fact that you compromise and it works does not mean it's God that made it work. There are many things that can happen in this life without God. Marriage can happen without God. You can make money without God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can get the job without God. Oh yes. You can get the admission without God. It's easy to compromise and get the blessing. But every time impatience leads you to take action, get ready because an Ishmael will be born. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Look at verse 11. 11 and 12. Let's see the tragedy of this union. The product of the inability to wait for the word of the Lord. To wait for the seasons. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child. Listen. And shall bear a son and shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Verse 12. And he will be what? Was that what she planned for? Abraham, was that the blessing you were told? He said, This union will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. That means this troubler will be everywhere. Till today, the world has not recovered from the union. Less than one day of pleasure as a result of impatience. Jeopardize the generation. Who is about to jeopardize his destiny here? There's, there are people here that are about to make decisions as a product of impatience. Is someone getting blessed tonight? The nation of Israel in Exodus chapter 32 when they came out of Egypt Moses went upon the mountain for 40 days. Look at me. It was a waiting period. Is that true? They didn't see any progress. Whereas Moses was on the mountain intercussing with God. So something was happening that they could not see it did not mean nothing was happening. Brothers and sisters, it looks like your life has been stagnant for years. You think you are stagnant, but if God should open your eyes to see the giants you have been conquering in the spirit. God is really ministering to someone tonight. It's not the way you have been looking at it. It's not the way you have been looking at it. Physically, you have not been in school for three years. But there is a progression. The Lord has been doing something. The job did not come. Five years after graduation, you are still struggling. And you believe you are like every other jobless person. Is that true? There is an investment of the Spirit in you. Only if you believe that waiting is not equal to delay in the kingdom. The nation of Israel could not wait. And what did they tell Aaron? Let's look at that verse. Exodus 32. Very quickly. Is someone getting blessed? Impatience can jeopardize your destiny. You can make mistakes that you may only be able to walk through. But never ever be able to cut out of your life. Hallelujah. And they told Aaron, they said, Moses is wasting our time. We don't even know whether he's dead or not. Please, we brought gold out of the temple. 
we remember that while we were slaves, we saw the Egyptians worshipping a god of gold. And it was the god that brought them out. Oh yeah, Aaron, come and build us this idol. Let's celebrate this idol. We can't wait. If there is God in heaven, why will he keep us in the wilderness for, for this long? 40 days. We didn't see Moses. He didn't tell us anything. And we are waiting. Let us build an idol. And while God was with Moses, advocating for the same people, they were destroying their own destiny by themselves. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings. They forced Aaron. They forced Aaron. Which are in the ears of your wives, and of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Verse 3. And all the people took the golden earrings. They were so desperate to come out of that season. They say, is it not earring? Take. Oh yeah, all the women, remove your earrings. Lest we need to carve out very fast. Never find yourself trying to help God in a process that is exclusively within His power to pass you through and bring you to a place of greatness. Many of us try to help God. Uza tried to hold the ark. He died, yet the ark never fell. Let's look at just one verse there and then we'll continue. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it into a graving tool. After he made it into what? A molten calf. And they said, This be thy God, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land so after two years, the child doesn't come. After praying and praying, oh, we trust God. And then somebody comes to say, there's one man who, it's not like I'm suggesting that he should go there. Me, my heart, it's me. Praise God. The man can pray. It's not like a habali. It's not exactly, it's not a pastor. It's not a habali, but he used to help people. He said, really? Two years ago, when they told you, he said, no, 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 I'm a child of God. Two years later, you are almost gassed out and you say, eh, eh, let me talk with my husband about it. And you know men, when you are talking, it looks like they will say no. And then you are talking and you say, where is the man? You say, have you seen him? Who has he, who has he given uh, a child to? Say, uh, let's be careful with all these people. Hallelujah. I counsel people and I am amazed at how much people fall when it looks like the word of God dwindles over their life just a little. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one lady who kept sending me text messages almost every day for one week. She said she believes that there are instructions I will give her for her marriage. I said, my dear, there's no instruction. I'm, I'm spending my life for hours shouting on Friday. Go and listen to Relationship and Family Life Series Part 1, 2, 3. The next day, they say she feels in her spirit that there is an instruction that will just open. You see, all these things is, is, is in innocence, but it's an act of impatience. Impatience will make you hear what God did not say. Impatience will create a road that was not of God. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Impatience will make you say yes to a guy that two weeks into the relationship you say, please, was I dreaming? Who did I say yes to? The guy will say, sweetheart, you say, me. I said yes to you. The guy say, you said yes. Now what is all this again? And ladies, please be warned. I don't know why as I'm talking, I'm coming into all this relationship. Thing. Maybe God is speaking to some people through it. Hallelujah. Ladies, don't find yourself putting pressure on any lady and say answer him now you said it's none of your business if it's not you they ask advice when you are invited otherwise stay away and pray many of us just come and say this guy is my personal person i know him i said you'll be in the relationship and many people jeopardize their destinies is he born again he's a nice person does he love the word of god he's okay he doesn't smoke. He, he used to smoke and drink before, but Abba, in the last one year, even him, he told me. He doesn't lie to me, honestly. If he, you Abba me, he 
loves me too much to lie until the day he pounds your face when Abel resurrects and you find out that that Cain Cain, sorry, Cain is alive and active and that guy beats the living daylight out of you or you enter his room and see another lady's clothes and the rest and he says, so what, I'm a man you said you're a Christian you will not sleep with me I come, you are still my wife but I have to find something to be doing before we get married impatience don't just laugh I hope you are getting the message it's a very serious message impatience brought the world under, under all kinds of terrible things someone getting blessed let's hurry up during the waiting period certain things usually happen and I want you to take note of them number one is that you have the tendency to get weary especially when you have obeyed every principle you know and there is no obvious change Hallelujah. There are so many people that, that send me text messages and all of that. And they say, sir, I have been, I've been paying my tithe. God knows. I've been faithful. I've been paying my tithe. I've sown seeds. I've done everything. I'm, I'm a worker in my church. Maybe a member of the, the, the decoration or whatever. I'm a member in this and that. Why is it not working? I've done everything. I've listened to every koinonia message. God is my witness. And I've been walking according to the principles of the kingdom. So weariness can set in. Especially when you are truly obeying the principles. There are many of us who have truly been tithing. You've truly been giving. You've been submitting your prayer request. Miracle service after miracle service. Nothing seems to have happened. But listen. Number two. Your joy begins to fade. When weariness sets in, your joy, like I said earlier on, begins to fade. Number three, impatience sets in. I'm giving, you to it, I'm giving it to you now systematically so that you understand. That these are the things that characterize seasons of waiting. The tendencies, the vulnerabilities. Number four, which is the most dangerous part is that you begin to consider options and alternatives other than that which God has given you. Options. Options. Usually those options are devilish. Usually those options may even look spiritual. But that's not the blueprint of God for your life. When Jesus met Peter, look at me. When Jesus met Peter, I told him, come, follow me. I will make you a fisher of men. Is that true? But when Jesus died, just for three days, three days, Peter did not see Jesus for three days. His patience could not pass 72 hours. And in John 21, he said, Oh boy, I go a fishing. And the disciples said, We go with you. In other words, let's go back to a, an option that we know something about. And when Jesus saw him in chapter 15, thereabout, he said, Lovest thou me? more than this how many of us have given God options God told you you are going to be a great man of God but he said be patient you were not patient now you have started a fellowship that is almost killing you only you and your best friend who is tired he wants to leave it's just that he doesn't know what to do with you only two of you every evening only two of the person is tired because although you are genuinely called but you cannot wait for timings and seasons hallelujah i remember one one pastor gentleman years ago that guy is still struggling till today and if he doesn't adjust he may still be struggling till only god knows when i remember his fellowship years ago appointed him and they said he was supposed to be chief usher it was such an embarrassment to his personality and he said, God did not tell him 
in the blueprint of his ministerial call that he will be chief usher. If they cannot honor the grace of God upon his life and give him something honorable. By honorable, he means maybe president of the fellowship or something close to it. See that? Many of us have etched ourselves out of the preparations of the spirit. We'll come there. Because we have given ourselves options. Options. Hallelujah. God gave you signs. He gave you symbols. He gave you tokens that will signify to you when certain things are his will. You have not seen them. The equation has not lined up. If God tells you something, 80% is still not God. You must wait until it looks like God. It's amazing how impatience can make a thing look like it is God. Whereas it is not of God. And so somebody comes and says, will you like to be a pastor in our church? And they say, thank you, Jesus. I knew it. You people are underutilizing my anointing. Anytime God did not send you, be sure that you will not see his hand. See, let me tell you, this is one of the reasons why people move ahead of God and they keep struggling until the season comes where God catches up with them and they call it breakthrough. Then they make another mistake again and they wait. Why don't you walk with God? It's dangerous to walk ahead of God. Hallelujah. Impatience. Some of our parents have put our families in trouble because of impatience. I must build a house this year. I must build a house this year. Because my colleagues have built houses. Me too, I must build a house. I must buy three cars this year. One for me, one for my wife, and one for the children. And some of you are part of the sponsors of this impatience. Daddy, do it. You can make it. I believe in you. And now we put all our parents under all sorts of nonsense pressure. Because there is no impatience. There, there's no patience, sorry. Hallelujah. Some of us are here. If you want to wear tomorrow's clothes today, get set to walk naked tomorrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I must buy a suit of 100,000. You carry everything God has blessed you with now, home and abroad. You bought one suit and you will die for the remaining part of your life. Whereas that money came to buy books. Is someone getting blessed? And then the trouble is the jet age and technology has made matters worse. Hallelujah. We have 15 year old millionaires. 20 year old millionaires. So everybody just says, I, I must make it in this Nigeria. If there is a kick, I must cut my share or stab whoever is standing close to my share until that piece of my kick comes to me. And you know, there are all kinds of confessions and prayers in the church that encourage this lust. Kill every enemy that is covering your kick, your portion of the kick. And you know, we do all kinds of things in the name of prophetic activities. Events sponsored by hell to push us into impatience. Say, I receive grace to be patient. There are many of us here. Sister, your life would not be in the mess that it is if only you were patient. You said, all my colleagues are in relationships. And one guy just came, one of the lonely ones among the friends. Say, okay, I'm doing too. And look, from that day till now, it's been four or five years of hell on earth because you attach yourself to Hagar and Ishmael is the product. Tonight, God is delivering someone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I will wait. Everyone say it, I will wait. I receive grace to wait. There is a difference between delay and process in the spirit. If you allow the devil to destroy your life. Listen, let me tell you, I, I shared with you a few stories last week. I remember when a few years ago, I would be invited to go and minister. Then there was no protocol, no nothing. And I would prepare fast and pray, right? And go and minister. And at the end of it, 
the people will not even say, oh, there is an honorarium who want to appreciate you. And I mean, I will fast for days as if I'm preaching in an international conference somewhere. And then I'll go and sometimes it's when I arrive that they'll push people in front. Praise God. And say there is a place. And I remember, I will never forget, two pastors, they came and met me. They said, man of God, the kind of anointing you have, there are some bishops that do not even have you. Why are you underutilizing this anointing? Many of us will hear that thing and say it's true. It's true. I'll never forget through the rain, through the sun, through whatever. I will risk myself, pay my own transport and get there. I will never forget there was a gentleman from BLW. It was his suit I used to borrow when they invite me for ministration. I will borrow his suit in Suleiman and then Jankfa had one nice loafers. His brother gave him. He will give me the loafers. The only thing I had was maybe socks or something. You are laughing. Don't be carried away by suits and all these things. Because many of see the trouble with men of God is they never open up the process that led them to that place. They make it look easy. As if it just happened by one prophetic word. And many of us are already running. You're already calculating your offering and your honorarium by Christmas. You better wake up. The, the journey is still far in Jesus' name. It's not that I'm not prophesying that. <laughs> I'm used to saying in Jesus' name, forgive me. Hallelujah. You must learn to wait. You must learn to wait. And I will show you why. We are going to wrap up when I reveal to you why this process is important in the kingdom. I will never forget one time when I got an honorarium of 10,000. I couldn't believe it. It was like I was dreaming. 10,000 for preaching something that is my passion that I will live and die for it. Brothers and sisters, a time came in my life when even me, I started talking to myself. I said, ah, but God, why are people doing this to me? People took me for granted. They would have lists of ministers that they are bringing for programs. But they'll find out that the cost implication for holding those graces is so much. And then they'll run to this scapegoat called Joshua Selman. Sometimes two days to the conference. They will invite me and I'll go to prayer. I'll say, Lord, and the Lord will say, Go. It looked like I was a fool, but one day came. Due season. Due season. You do not qualify to enter your future if you cannot wait. Who is God speaking to tonight? God gave you a small business under 100,000. You've not been effective there. You're already dreaming in the name of Jesus in two months. I'll be riding a Jaguar. I'll be, you better stop dreaming and settle down and understand how things happen in the kingdom. Tame your lust and line it up with the seasons of the spirit. There is a difference between speed and foolishness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people step into seasons that is not God. That, let's, listen, if you force a door to open, whether it's God that opened it or not, it will open. But the trouble is, when they ask you who sent you, you will turn back and find out that you've been going alone. Hallelujah. So what do you do as you await your due season? This is the crux of this teaching tonight. What do you do when your due season is yet to appear? When that waiting period gets so long, Lord, will the child come? Will the breakthrough come? When will you change my story? Every time I go to pray, you show me a great destiny. You told me a day will come. I will minister before thousands. I will be an international evangelist. You are giving me an international apostolic or prophetic ministry. But as it is, I have not yet seen it.
Number one, I'm giving you the formula. Brothers and sisters, if you keep this secret, you will survive the process between prophecy and manifestation. You will find out that while men are falling by the wayside, there will be a strength that will carry you. Number one, during your waiting period, you should do the following. Recognize that there is a divine timing and a due season. It comforts you to know that your wait is not forever because God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8 won't turn there, tells us that there is a time for everything under the sun the Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his what season of appearance everyone prophesy to yourself my season of appearance is coming Prophesy, my season of appearance is coming. Can you turn it into a prayer in one minute? I may not look like it now. But my God, there is a making. And my season of appearance will come. I have a portion among the great. And the hand of God will bring me there. I will stay through. I may not be able to preach now. I may not have money in my pocket now. But there is a due season. It has been written by prophecy. Not the witches in my village can stop it. No power in existence. And I choose to wait. I choose to wait. There is a due season. When I will drive the cars. There is a due season. When men will run after me with jobs. There is a due season. When so many men will come to ask my hand in marriage, there is a due season when my own family will dedicate their own building. Oh yes, time and chance happen to them all. My turn is coming. I know this for sure. A day will come. I will know what it feels like to be a kingdom millionaire. A day will come. That wedding ring will enter my hand too. But meanwhile I wait A day will come I will travel abroad As though I'm walking from my house And going outside I will enter the plane A day will come I will wear the convocation gown A day will come I will finally pass the job There is a due season The child will come Barrenness does not last forever Prophesy in one minute. Shake away unbelief. Shake away impatience. A day will come. I will have peace with my husband. I know it's a demonic challenge. There are ancestral powers causing this family problem. But there is a due season when the hand of God will visit my family. I know, but I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded. I am persuaded. I may not see the wind, I may not see the cloud, it does not look like it will rain. But the hand of Jehovah, that hand that regulates times and seasons, my turn will come. I will be on television. My turn will come. The healing anointing will finally work. My time will come. When my profiting will appear, it's called my season of appearing. It's called my season of appearing. Hallelujah. Recognize that everything under the sun works by timing. So when men are pushing you, into seasons you are not ready for. Listen. I cannot tell you. God gave me an instruction. And God told me. He said. 
that you would use koinonia messengers like angels and messengers of fire and send them across the nations and God specifically said we should never not in this season of ministry begin to sell tapes and do all of that I cannot tell you how many people have called to say man of God you are robbing your ministry of millions of naira I said I appreciate your interest but there is a season are you hearing what I'm saying so many people have spoken to me come and open koinonia branch in abuja come and open in lagos come and do this come and do that i told you in 2006 after our crusade in Jos, it was so powerful the pfn said that we should come and open a branch of the ministry they were willing to give pastors so that we would train and have an auditorium i went to god and god said you would die that was exactly what i told them that god said i would die listen many men of God today do you know why ministry is killing them although God called them they have opened other seasons for themselves God never spoke to them to start a church they started a church now they are wondering no money no nothing no grace there are many people God told them you are an evangelist they said I need a base so that I will have money as though God cannot finance his work are you seeing how it has gotten a lot of people into trouble? Never do anything without asking God. Even if God said yes yesterday, ask him today again. Three days for us to start Koinonia, I went on a retreat. Three days I went on a retreat. And I said, Lord, it's not that I'm doubting you, but I want to confirm again. For adventure, it was my flesh that minister to me. Hallelujah. When you see what the hand of God is upon, even if you are a critic, you will know that there is God in what is happening. Hallelujah. What season in your life have you opened prematurely as a result of impatience? I know you are anointed MOG who asked you to start a healing ministry. You started gathering sick people and telling all of them, write what is wrong with you and lift it up. You want to become a great man. Everybody you laid hands on, nobody was healed. The people are angry. They are planning to beat you by the next healing service. You better go back to God and ask questions. Hallelujah. Many people have produced albums prematurely they produce five albums not even their immediate environment no they they traveled abroad took the albums it didn't sell because the season see i taught you last week that favor is one of the clearest signs that god is with you hallelujah recognize that there is a due season sister be delivered tonight the husband will come you are not the first to get married neither will you be the last brother i know you are almost 30 years old relax it's better to enter a profitable relationship at 30 than to enter nonsense that you sweat for three years before the arm of god will come to deliver you some of you see people in relationship and you admire them go and talk to them in truth and find out some of them, as they are going, they are just tired. They, it's just that they don't know what to do again with their lives. There is a child. They are already married. Say preparation. Many people want to drive cars. I must buy a car. I must buy a car. By force, the word of God is working. Nobody ever drove a car in my family. I must be the one and it must be this year. Calm down. Look, trust me. We prophesy all the time and my, my greatest joy is to see everyone blessed spiritually, financially, socially, and so on and so forth. But then, God will judge me if I tell you that after prophecy, it will just happen to you the next day. It's 
not every aspect of your life that will happen like that. There are seasons. Everybody says seasons. There is seed. There is time. There is harvest. Let's hurry up. Number two. Every time you are about to get weary because the waiting period to your breakthrough is so long and it looks like will God ever come? Will I ever get to Canaan? After crossing the Red Sea, while you are rejoicing, thinking that's all, you find out that there is another mighty battle waiting for you. Listen. The second key is to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. It's amazing how we easily forget the things that God has done in our lives. And we focus on the things that He has not done. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, this house is too small. We are tired. We need a change. Remember when you were managing with one room and that one room it was your friend that gave you. Although God has told you you are going to a new house, but in the interim, when impatience wants to set in, when weariness wants to set in, count the faithfulness of God. Where is the God that gave me a lion? Where is the God that gave me the bear? Oh God, I'm, I'm not eating hamburgers and all of this now, but Lord, I'm no more soaking Gary. At least I can eat once in a day that I paid by myself. In the dream, I saw four points. When the result came out, I saw 3.1. But Lord, I give you praise because it used to be 1.7 and you have helped me. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. It's easy for Satan to trivialize God's faithfulness in your life. Once in a while, I have the opportunity to go to hospitals to see people. And, and then I, I pray for people once in a while. And I am humbled at the confidence of people in the midst of humanly speaking unchangeable situations hallelujah I have spoken to so many HIV patients in my life and you look at some of them and you humanly speaking you can say it's over you are counting days but you see the joy I remember speaking with one of the women very recently and this woman was rejoicing she said I now have a ministry and it was, she did not even come for the counseling for healing. She had so conquered it that for her to live is Christ and to die is gain. She was focusing on something else. Yet there is somebody shouting and arguing. If the husband does not come in two months, Lord, if I backslide, let it be that it's your fault. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people who have been diagnosed. Oh, you need to go to the hospital, brothers and sisters and see people whose legs they've cut, they amputated the legs and then you keep seeing them singing His faithfulness is forevermore a pretty lady who is not married already but she had an accident and one eye is gone are you getting my point? and she says, yes, Lord I thank you I'm alive if I can do nothing I can give God praise whereas a house close to that same street where the accident occurred. There is a complainer and a murmurer shouting at God. We are tired of eating spaghetti in this house. My father only pays school fees. Shame on him. At his age, he cannot even give me 5,000. My father is giving me 1,000. You wait and see the one that it was with box and prophecy they sent them from the village to come to Zaria. One heavy echo like and prophecy may God be with you. And he came and stopped at North Gate, not having one naira, yet they are in 300 level. 
When you see people worshiping Koinonia, everyone knows the story. We can wear suit and fake it, but everyone knows where the shoe is hurting. So don't let anybody stop your praise when it's time to worship God. They gave birth to them in a nice maternity world. They gave birth to you on the road. The faithfulness of God. You would have died within 24 hours. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Who is God speaking to tonight? You cried for years. Let the husband come. Now the husband has come. You are saying, Lord, I need a boy. I need a boy. I'm tired of three girls. On the other side, a woman is saying, Lord, anything, anything, boy or girl, whatever, I am grateful. Just one. I don't need two. I just need a consolation. That I am a woman. What to do? This is one big secret of my life. You never find me frowning and wondering. What will my tomorrow be? Me? God has done too much in my life. I can begin to count on the faithfulness of God till my time of manifestation comes and it will not finish. Hallelujah. That's why by the grace of God, there is no reason for me to envy any man till I die. People challenge me, I am happy. But God has done too much in my life. I will be the most ungrateful person in my life if I ever try to trivialize what God has done. Sister, you are always complaining, but you forgot you are beautiful. There was there about beauty. Oh, may God change it for one day and you will know what is there about beauty. Are you kidding? Beauty took a woman from her village to become the king's wife. You never say, Lord, thank you. Every day somebody says, I'm fine. To an extent, when they say you're fine, say, please don't mock me. Hold on. See, let me tell you something. Ungratefulness is a terrible disease. It's sin before God. Refusing to acknowledge the things that he has done. Shine on me Your grace Your grace I'm nothing without you It's grace Your grace Shine on me Hallelujah You are there complaining Oh God, so I'm going to graduate with a pass. You wouldn't have given me the admission. Really? Really? You wait and find out students that were withdrawn in their second year or third year because they could not get a C, not an E, a C because of the nature of their program. Hallelujah. And they left school and went, and went to learn handwork and they are still grateful to God. Hallelujah. Can we take two minutes to count our blessings? Go ahead and do it. Just in two minutes and we'll continue. Think of when you were nothing, brothers and sisters. Oh, I know what God has done in my life. No amount of honor will fool me. No amount of grace. Some of us were called this. God saved us. Some of us, when God saved you, you could not even speak English. You know it. Your family is still living in a hut right now. But God has exalted you. Tell him thank you. Your grace, your grace, when nothing without you. Those of us who have been in this ministry for a while, remember when we used to sit on the floor. Remember when we used to sit on the floor. Who is God speaking to tonight? You are a graduate and you are still complaining. How many graduates does Nigeria produce in a year? 
I heard about a lady who had a ghastly motor accident today and died. How many of us have escaped accident? Armed robbers came to your house. They came to your neighbor's house. They came to your shop. Terrorists blew bombs in different places. Some of you saw it. You saw them. They pointed guns at you. But there was a hand of destiny that delivered you. When have you become ungrateful? Go ahead and pray. And say, Lord, although I have not seen what you will do yet, I have not seen the manifestation, but I thank you. I thank you. The God who did it for me before will do it again. The God who gave me a husband will give me a child. The God who gave me parents. The God who gave me admission will pay my school fees for next session. God who sustained my father without a job for 10 years that God is able God who sustained my mother without salary she trained me to school where is that God where is the God that delivered you when the doctors concluded about you when that breast lump grew up when, when, when that when your hair was your hair was falling where is that God that helped you some of our parents were sacked and God gave them better jobs. Have you forgotten the faithfulness of this God? Your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Hallelujah. There are seven secrets the Lord gave me. And the Lord told me if I keep these secrets, nothing will stop me from becoming what He has destined for me. One day maybe I will share them. But one of it is this that I've shared with you tonight. If you know how to take advantage of your testimonies, you will never never become a victim of impatience. Let's hurry up. Number three. What to do while you wait for your due season? Employ the weapon of praise. Hiya. Many people do not know that praise is a weapon. Employ when when you count your blessings, then you balance it up with praise and see the devil that will stand to speak discouragement to you. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's hurry up. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's read from verse 17 and let's see what the prophet had to say. Habakkuk chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, this is what makes some people mighty. And they walk upon the earth as if Satan does not exist. There are revelations that empower men. Although, everyone look up. The fig tree shall not blossom. But at least there is a fig tree. Is that true? Neither shall fruit be in the vines. But at least there is a vine. The labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Somebody say, yet I will rejoice. The Wayek result did not come out well. Yet I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of what? The God that will bring that salvation. I will rejoice. Although nothing may seem to work. Some of you as you go back right now to your homes. The truth is that there is nothing to eat this night. 
yet I will rejoice. I remember times in my life, I've told you, when I would buy bread and cut the bread and put granite uh, and close it and give thanks to the God of Israel because I knew that what was in me was greater than a restaurant. Greater than whatever. Can you sing the song he's played now, Sam? What does the song say? Let's even understand the meaning of the song. So that we know we are singing. Evil people, what does he say? Email. That's what I'm saying. What's the meaning? Thank you. Yeah? Thank you. For what? Thank you that you've done well. You've done well. God bless you. Email. Just worship God in one minute. Email. Oh, Papa. Oh, God of your salvation, thank you. Very quickly, Psalms 138, verse 1. Powerful scripture. I'm giving you the arsenals to go back and bulldoze the gates of hell and let the devil know that although you were almost gassing out, you came for koinonia tonight and that the oil will never run dry. He said, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods, all the gods that want me to be weary. He said, I will praise you before the gods. I will sing praises. That means I will look at all of these options and I will dance before God and say, it's better for me to remain barren than to go to a herbalist to get a child. The weapon of praise. The weapon of praise. Let me hurry up because I want us to take at least five or ten minutes. Two more points and we'll round up. We have to praise God this night. Number four. What do you do while you wait for your due season? Number four. Look up. Begin to act like the future you see coming. While you wait, if you truly believe that you are going to enter that future, begin to act. If you think you are going to get into the palace, then start learning the language of royalty. It's the sign of faith that you are preparing. You believe you are getting married. Start behaving like a married woman, not a small girl. Change. Switch. Have the mindset. Develop the ideologies that conform to the new level you are entering. Start acting like the person you believe you are going to be. Develop the mindset. You believe you are going to be a multi-billionaire CEO. Start behaving like that. Don't behave like an arm robber. Don't read any nonsense you see on the internet. Compose yourself. Start carrying the traits of leaders. You believe you are going to be an exceptional leader. Start training yourself. Don't speak anyhow. Great men don't speak anyhow. Start learning the protocol of greatness. There is a protocol that leads you into the realm of greatness. You believe you are going to be standing before presidents. Start behaving well. With your plate of gari, use fork and knife and lead. No problem. Make your mistakes. You are doing it in the secret place. A day will come you will do the real one. For sure. Begin to act like your future. When Joseph, Joseph knew 
he had seen it in the spirit seen it in the dream that a day will come he will stand the sun representing his father the moon representing his mother and 11 stars will bow to him but then his life was opposite what his destiny was saying they threw him in the well and he composed himself he said i'm a leader i will learn the language of royalty listen when they sold him for the equivalent of about 13 dollars or so that's the equivalent today 13 dollars you sell a human being were they so broke that they sold their brother to go away but joseph said no problem there's one song we used to sing before you can take my coat you cannot touch my destiny we used to sing and jump with it during missions then in fcs that you can take my coat you cannot touch my destiny should i teach you one minute one two sing you can take my coat you cannot touch my destiny they can take your coat they can lie against you they can scandalize you that's taking your coat but it will not touch your destiny they can say you will never make it no problem that's taking your coat it doesn't just mean till a woman comes to lie that you rape her whatever men do to impede your progress they are taking your coat but they can take your coat they cannot touch your destiny see this must be your contemplations in the secret place The cost of your future is preparation. The cost, the price, the cost for your future is your preparation. While you prepare for your due season, keep getting qualified for that future. You will never enter a future that you are not qualified for. I shared this last week. God will never bring you into a future you are not prepared for. So he will hold back that time so that your preparation will coincide with the comings of times and seasons. The period of waiting is the process that qualifies you for your future. Write it down. The period of waiting is the process. The trainings that you receive during that period of waiting is what qualifies you for the future. So your waiting period is a period of preparation. Everybody say my waiting period is my period of preparation. Say one more time. If God gave you the 5 million naira last year, he would have killed you. So God says, hold on. Just keep being faithful with the 100,000. Oh God, but my colleagues have 1 million. Say, no, none of your problem. Just wait. And then you keep building yourself. God, I want the level of anointing that will move mountains and do all of that. God will say, just, just keep moving your chair in the place of prayer. Your chair is small enough for you to move. When you can move that chair, you will move something else till you move mountains. David did not become a king in one day. There was a progression. Although he was anointed for the palace, there were seasons. Be faithful at your current level. When Joseph went to Potiphar's house, he was so exceptional. He didn't have to wait until he got to Pharaoh. He was faithful, excellent. So much so that Potiphar made him the head of everything. He walked like royalty. He talked what would make the wife of Potiphar to be attracted. You know, slaves had a way that they dressed. Their beds were long. They didn't have time to shave and look nice. But Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph and she, she was stripped. She said, come, I prefer this guy to my husband because he walks like royalty. Other slaves were moving this over. Wherever we die, Joseph said, I'm not dying in Egypt. I know that I've come to the place of royalty. 
square up your shoulder and know that it only one of the most comforting scriptures for me in scripture in the Bible is and it came to pass everybody say and it came to pass powerful scripture it never comes to stay and it came to pass you hear the Bible say it again on the fifth day of this month and that and that and the word of the Lord came to pass hallelujah how many of you are behaving like your future already don't raise your hand some of you are still behaving like your past because in the future you will be too great to keep bitterness but you are still keeping bitterness right from secondary school now you've met with the lady in university and you say even till we die you are still holding on to your past you are prolonging your arrival because you are not preparing yourself to be qualified hallelujah your preparation is your report card that qualifies you for the future your preparation is your report card your diligence at this level number five Oh, that's a beautiful song. We've not sang this song in a while. You think I'll sing it? Let's continue. I'm trying to rush. Number five. What to do while you are waiting for your due season? Look for problems to solve. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. We discussed that last year. No man ever enters greatness. You find favor with God through the fear of the Lord, through faith and through tithing. You find favor with men by solving problems. Joseph knew that he had the ability to solve problems. And he rejoiced when he was in the prison. Potiphar's wife lied that he raped her. said, no problem. The truth will come out because you can see look at me you become too cheap when you spend your time explaining yourself to critics are you getting me you become too cheap you make yourself too cheap there are many of us who learn this now learn this now it is easier to become great than to remain great look at me come my sister Let this girl buy a jeep now. That by next week, Koinonia, she comes with what jeep now? Car people. Huh? Ah, that, that has expired now. Who is thinking of all this money? Praise God. Jaguar. No, let me say something realistic. CRV. Right? Honda CRV 2014 limited edition and she comes with it do you know at once all of a sudden you will find fault with her hair you will find fault with what she's wearing is it this place they put watch or here you know why listen people's progress often it has a way of choking and revealing our current weakness it is a natural thing you must learn how to celebrate greatness when you see it. That's the antidote to jealousy and having the heart of a critic. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if this lady came from one village somewhere and all of a sudden she marries a millionaire and God just changes her life. There are people who say, eh, is this how to smile? She's not even behaving like a rich man's wife. Hold on. The truth is, it's not about her smile. Because if another millionaire comes to marry you too, you stop. You have now become colleagues in greatness. So no more criticism. Are you seeing that? I'm teaching you a principle. Every time people criticize you, understand their predicament. Don't be angry. Your success is doing something to them. Listen. Hold on. You were still doing the same thing before you got great. Why was it not an issue? That is today now, all of a sudden, eh, 
Shedrach wants to show us he's wearing shoe of 20,000. Who doesn't have it? If not because of my father, will I not be wearing it? No problem. Listen. Deliver yourself from the spirit of criticism by celebrating greatness when you see it. Oh, Shedrach, this is beautiful. You are looking smart. Wow, wonderful. We are coming. God bless you. You hardly criticize those you truly celebrate. Are you getting my point? Please, learn this. Every time you see God doing a good thing in someone's life, many of our parents are like that. You just saw one doctor, one professor in ABU. He just changed the fifth car. Say, he's dropping the money of the institution. It's all that. Get out of that attitude of cynicism and learn to celebrate. Because you are sowing seeds that will speak for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't spend your time trying to respond to critics. You say, hey, you have started palming your hair. You want all the colonial guys to see you, no problem. Just continue doing what you are doing. And truly they will see you. And marry and leave the person criticizing you. Problems are gates, right? Problems are not walls. They are gates. Problems are doors. Begin to view problems as gates. It exits you from one season and brings you into another. The sun will no more give you sunlight by The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh binds up the wounds of this world, He heals all the bruises inflicted by... This is your past now. Hallelujah. You never learned this song for how many years? Those of us who are new are lost. The old people didn't used to sing. They'll just keep chewing their mouth. The moment you say, Heal all the wounds inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Problems are opportunities for significance. When God wants to announce you, He seduced problems for you to solve. Until you solve a problem, you are not known by anybody. You remain insignificant. Until there was Goliath, David was not known. Until the king had a dream, Joseph was not needed. Problems are opportunities for your significance. Problem solving guarantees your success. Please write. I'm showing you the things to do that will bring you into your due season. Problem solving guarantees your success. Write this down. Problem solving creates your distinction from others. Everybody will look at you the same way they are looking at everybody until an ability to solve problems distinguishes you. Sovereign problem solving sets you apart. It distinguishes you. It makes your difference to be seen. Problem solving makes you known. You will remain in the wilderness until the problem you solve announces you. When you do this, you can rejoice knowing that a due season is coming. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. Brothers and sisters, as I look at us here, I see people who are bigger than Nigeria. I see people who are bigger than, than West Africa. There is an anointing within you. Some of you are sitting down here. Nobody, look, let me tell you. I have learned from experience that there are all kinds of gifted people scattered in this house. You may just sit down and watch people. I remember when I was marking the exams of the, the, the first set of the, the students, the school of ministry. 
my goodness. Those guys were trained under quite some harsh condition. They had like six months of strike and all of that. For a four-month program, they spent close to a year. When I was marking their exams, I was even afraid. I said, these guys did not do well. I was shocked. I tell you, some people wrote that exam as if it's magnet. And it's a kind of exam that you can even carry your, your, your notes and write it and you will still form it. And I learned once again, brothers and sisters, the person sitting close to your side may be a genius that is bigger than this realm. It's only a matter of time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Forget about the board, what the board has told you. 1.1, 2.2, 3.3, hold on. You are bigger than that. But will you wait for your season of appearance? Or will you get so intimidated? There are many people who sit down and say, I'm bigger than this level. So I will move myself. That's the greatest danger. There are some of you that are doing jobs of 20,000. But the truth is that even if they pay you 1 million naira, they have insulted you based on what you have. Continue doing the 20,000 naira job. Qualify yourself for the greater seasons that are coming. Hallelujah. There are some of you when you sit in class with your colleagues. Academically speaking, you may not be the best students. But there is so much in you. Don't worry. Don't try to announce yourself. Relax. A day will come, God will speak and say, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved kingdom millionaire. This is my beloved apostle. This is my beloved prophet. This is my beloved pastor. And he will command the world to hear you. Listen, let me tell you this. There is nothing you can do with a man or a people that become a force. When you have results, real results, replicable results, it is impossible for a territory to deny your presence. Here's what Jesus said, teaching in what we call the Beatitudes, the principles of the kingdom. He says, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. He says, you are a city, not like a city, a city that is set on a hill. How can a city be on a hill? Men whom the earth was not worthy of. A city set on a hill. Giving light. Men will light that candle and put it on top of a bush. For a very long time, pastors have made the church weak. Because they don't know what else to do when they are not saved. They are the weakest in every society. They are the poorest. They are the whatever it is under the spirit of servitude within a territory i reject that for koinonia in the name of jesus christ that you are able to disciple and mentor nations god is giving us influence and granting us grace and when that influence comes people will be able to listen to you you will say the same thing now that you said five years ago and people will cry hearing you not because more anointing was added to it more result is now backing what you are saying the same thing you said before are we together now yes everything they say about you is correct until your results prove otherwise everything they say your God is weak, they are right until your results prove otherwise. Hearing is my father glorified, 15 and verse 8, John. Hearing. Brothers and sisters, let us not be hypocrites for God's sake. This is how God is glorified. When ye bear much fruit, when ye bear much fruit, when ye bear much fruit, my mother and my father, when your children become the best and the most influential people within a city and are madly in love with God, they will influence more people within a year than you will do holding a crusade in 10 years. Everybody is seeking for someone to reference his life after. That's why we chase after musicians. That's why we go online searching for people. When people show certain things that we want, even if we know they are lying, we still follow them. If someone decides to wear rags today, 
if you see the money he has close to the rags tomorrow you too since you don't have the money you can start with the rags at least you can tear your cloth to look like it to give you hope that you will become like him we are making nonsense marketable because there is no result to back it i vow to myself and i vow before my god that i will never be a weak representative of the kingdom by every standard as far as the territories are located for my my spiritual impact is concerned we will have to do something for god that will make god beat his chest and say truly i have sons upon the earth that's why we are here that's why we are here and many times you will think that these things are just boastful statements no when a man speaks you need to look at the force back in him if it is your ability whether intellectual physical whatever then you are wasting your time but the power of the highest mary said how shall these things be seen that i know not a man and the angel said the power of the highest will overshadow you are we together now the mandate of jesus is not more members the mandate of jesus is not a greater name for a ministry the mandate of Jesus is not more people in a register. The mandate of Jesus is not more slaves loyal to a man called a man of God. The mandate of Jesus is that there will be people who understand the kingdom and love him and understand his system to be able to mentor and disciple nations. Your nation must look up to you otherwise you have failed. If it's business, if it's ministry, if it's family, whatever it is go and make disciples go and make disciples go and make disciples go and make disciples not go and have denominations go and make disciples that you should not give room for any unbeliever within your territory to hold a level of influence that will have to make you bend to God to receive their resources. No, sir. This is a message that the devil has fought for many years. And so many believers, especially we around the northern middle belt and part of the... We, we, we are not kingdom and we are not strategic in our understanding. We are morally sound, bless God. We love the Lord with all our heart, bless God. But we find out that our lives are empty, void of spiritual meaning. Because we do not know what else to do. So we seek God. We love Him. We become anointed. We even fall under the anointing. But to what end was that anointing given? We don't know. So we roam around and hope that the mundane things that we spend our lives on will give us meaning nothing else has the ability to give your life meaning than knowing that you are living your life according to purpose and that it is given joy to the father in a few minutes from now we are going to be celebrating dimensions of the hand of god the miracles of god you know why we are doing this because we know that first we love the people but second it is a testament that's why it matters when unbelievers hear what God is doing when believers hear what God is doing thank God for it but the real impact is that what God is doing gets to the ears of the unbelievers because it will compel them are we together now you are gathered here tonight first because you love God he brought you but quite honestly because you are trusting God for various levels of supernatural solutions people have been here since Monday Tuesday Wednesday families groups ministries people have traveled endured all kinds of things because someone told you or you heard it in a message that if you came here your life and your situation will change did you think they lied sit back and watch what god does with your life in a few minutes from now. So, that when you leave this place and go back as a man of god you will be surprised yourself the next time you see you will not come alone you will be too grateful to come alone when a mother comes here and sees what god does to her she will remember immediately that my stubborn neighbor's son that means 
they always wanted him change it's just that they had been looking for a place anointed enough to make them let me tell you i still say it again and again i thank god for posters i thank god for handbills please i'm in no way trying to demean them but nothing will cover the publicity that real power and real result creates people are too grateful rumors spread in overnight nobody paid for it and yet it goes round. that's the same way the word of the lord can come upon you I came for koinonia a program called the miracle service i just strolled there and my life changed overnight madam the next one is next month i don't have money you, you better look for money and you see people run around and come and receive and so our own assignment is to continue to stay with god to make sure that everybody that comes you take a level of fire that like queen of sheba you say half of this was not told me if we are not doing this this is just jamboree and a ceremony and a sin and wickedness because when people pay so much price and leave wherever they come from to come and sit down and then we entertain and make all kinds of noise and jargons and they go back again with the same pain we've wasted their time and we cause the heart of the father to bleed we make miracle walk promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are we make a miracle walker promise keep you won't believe i've not even touched what i wanted to share as the message for tonight God, this year your life will change in the name of jesus christ this year your life will change by the power of the holy spirit it's true let those who laugh at you laugh Ephesians chapter 3 please let me have your attention I want to share with you a powerful revelation that God put in my heart for this meeting and then we will pray mighty God we bless you Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 the Bible says now unto him please look up the Lord has been pounding this scripture in my heart and I need to teach you and show you and make sure that you get it as a revelation now unto him that is able to do everybody say able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think everybody say ask or think one more time say ask or think that means there are two ways listen carefully your petitions and requests get to God number one is through your prayer by verbalizing it number two is through your thinking your paradigm also is a prayer request it sends prayers to heaven the Bible says God will do what you ask or think not ask and think that means when you are not praying and you are thinking you are still praying before God your mouth and your mind are also prayer warriors the only thing is that for many of us our mouths are better prayer warriors than our minds most times our minds pray nonsense and that's why you find out that the things that you desire you may not see the results that are consistent with your desires because there are two prayer warriors in your life one is your mouth let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart both be acceptable that means the words of my mouth can be acceptable but the meditations of my heart can cancel everything he is able to do listen carefully exceeding abundantly far above all i ask far above all i think it matters it matters 
that the word of God does not just penetrate our spirits alone the word of God must have an effect listen carefully you will never be a world changer you will never be usable in the hand of God until the word of God is able to influence your understanding influence you we're talking about fruitfulness you will never be fruitful this year just because a prophetic word came as powerful as it is you can limit God your mouth may be praying because you are told to pray but your mind continues to make your destiny unfruitful listen very carefully most of the miracles that we need I submit to you most of the miracles that we need are in the realm of our understanding and the realm of the mind much more than physical miracles we need a real miracle of a reconstructed understanding to be able to know God's perspectives this is the secret of victory this is how we win in this kingdom that's why the preaching and the teaching of the word is very important because they are the spiritual systems are located for bringing understanding when the word is preached and taught generally it brings you into a comprehension it influences your understanding and when your mind listen when your mind changes then truly your life will change it's true you are not truly free until your mind is free no matter what else around you is free if your mind is under captivity then you are really in bondage are we together let me show you something a revelation that god gave me for tonight luke chapter 4 we're reading five verses luke chapter 4 we'll start from verse 14 luke chapter 4 this is jesus now luke chapter 4 and verse 14 after his time of fast and prayer the bible says and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went out a fame of him through the region round about 15. and he taught in their synagogues you see jesus was a teacher he was a teacher he wanted to give people understanding 90 percent of his ministry was teaching 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 he built the disciples by teaching the impartations happen few times most of their encounters was the teaching ministry of jesus that's how they became apostles the bible says being glorified of all 16. let me have your attention now and he came to nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up for to read he's about to read isaiah 61 now listen and there was delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised just keep 18. see how many times the various issues required preaching there were three main issues in the ministry of Jesus that the solution was hidden in preaching not doing preaching number one very quickly that every time you met a poor man the solution lied in doing something to his mind the Bible says he had anointed me to preach not just to give to the poor he had anointed me to do something to their minds because the issue whether it is some version say meek it doesn't matter no matter how you see it it still requires preaching so when you see someone in a financial predicament god's recommendation is that that person is not yet free until the word of god is able to do something to his mind otherwise that person will remain in bondage how true bless someone who is poor in his mind a thousand times his mind would turn his life back to look like his mind when it has to do with the poor the secret to really helping them is to camp them under the wisdom of god's word and the bible says to preach the gospel to the poor the next sets of people that require preaching amazing 
amazing this is where the apostolic and prophetic ministry in many regards has failed woefully the next set of those who require preaching are those who are captive in need of deliverance he didn't say to conduct deliverance he said to preach deliverance that means much more than driving the spirit entity in their lives and around their situations jesus is saying they are not truly free until deliverance is preached to them listen to my teaching the mystery of deliverance i call this deliverance through transformation that your mind is reoriented again to have spiritual understanding that keeps the door closed one of the things and and i thank god that this is a ministry that believes in the whole counsel of god shortly we are going to be praying casting out devils and just taking away these influences that stand the way of people but then the bible says that the journey to deliverance will continue being a cycle a helpless cycle to the point that it becomes a mockery until the preaching dimension not the laying hands dimension not the prophecy dimension the preaching dimension there is something that must be captured in your deliverance message that affects the minds not just the spirits and the bodies of men otherwise these spirits will make a mockery of you they will leave the people and return back because their mindsets have become strongholds the spirits have created fortifications around their thinking that will allow the spirit come back again are we together to preach deliverance not just to conduct deliverance i admit to you that it is here that the apostolic and the prophetic ministry in many regards has failed because of the charismatism that is around ministering to people seeing someone fall roll under the anointing you know when that happens it looks like it's an accolade on you as the man of god and so we enjoy it no matter how many times you must go through that rigor i'm satisfied provided it helps in making me shine but the bible is saying by and large the delivery will be tired <laughs> permit me my english that person is not going to except if it's a fresh impartation and the person must know the new grace that is different from last week's falling there's a lot of mess in the body of christ demons continue to make mockery of our ignorance many people are permanent gateways for the entry and the exit of spirits it was jesus himself that carried out the demonology lecture he didn't give anybody he handled that course by himself and this is what he taught us remember when jesus talks you listen he says when a spirit leaves a man that means spirits can leave men we know that apostles and prophets we god has helped us in that area we know how to make spirits leave men but the Bible says that spirit will go through dry regions seeking for a place of refuge. Are we together now? And then the Bible says not finding a place of refuge. Here's what the spirit will say. Remember the person had been delivered now and he's jumping in the church and he's happy. Hallelujah. Doors are opening and the spirit is saying I'm coming back. The spirit is saying I will go back like the prodigal son. The prodigal son said, I will arise and go back to my father. The spirit says, I will arise and go back to my house. He's calling the person who had been delivered my house. That means he's still, he's still laying claims. He comes back according to Jesus and finds the house swept, clean, but empty. Everybody say empty. Say it, empty. There is a law in the spirit that anywhere there is void, anything can fill it. When there was darkness and void, the Holy Spirit came to hover around it. Swept clean through deliverance by casting out the devil, but then empty. Because the word contents that will fill that person and close the door permanently is not there. He has not received the preaching dimension of deliverance. To let you know that now that this spirit has left you, are we together now to begin to educate you into understanding what christ has done for you and then to help you to be able to stand your ground like paul would teach in the book of ephesians supplying you all the spiritual arsenals that can keep you safe now that you are free it's not there 
so the spirit will rout through anything anger jealousy and gladly stroll back into the person unfortunately jesus said no spirit returns alone it will gather seven others more dangerous than itself and return to the person so that the end of that person is worse than the beginning if you're with me say amen, amen. this is why there are many temporal miracles you hear people say i received a miracle a spirit left me and then i started this and then the situation gets compounded and it becomes worse again because the person does not or he has not been educated to see the relevance you see let me tell you this come the moment you cast a spirit out of a person or out or around a situation spirits are not only in people spirits are also in situations situations are bodies that spirits can possess are we together now yes so that situation or that body the spirit leaves but the individual listen carefully the individual is here standing and his mindset has not been changed has not been altered the mindset becomes a gateway that spirit enters back and continues to influence the person and when these spirits study the man of god and they know that the man of god may be well-meaning he may be very anointed but his word content is very low they no longer will be afraid even before you cast them they'll just go out and you will think it's a sign that you are getting more anointed it's a sign that they have mastered your ignorance and created a way of insulting you they will freely go and wait immediately after the grace they enter the person and continue to go so you see the labor it looks like this warfare is endless you will continue to cast out demons and demons and demons and demons forever whereas there can be victory established are you with me now that's why you can have a particular dream or series of dreams or all kinds of attacks and then you can have a strong season where there is an emphasis on the ministry or deliverance ministry or something like that and then the demons leave and afterwards the patience and the interest to allow deliverance be taught you is not there and these spirits will return they are stubborn spirits so said jesus they don't live and go away even satan left jesus for a while and came back came back through peter came back through judas until he thought he got jesus are we together the body of christ does not have the patience to allow the word of god let me tell you this if you are not teaching people you have to teach people the value of sitting to receive and to grow in the word the bible says let the word of christ dwell in you in all richness you are a man of god here please listen it is not so much about manifestation and rolling under the anointing and, and all of those kinds of things train your people to sit down and listen to the word of god and then train yourself to make sure you understand what you are teaching so that the people are not listening to what becomes poisonous to them if you're with me say amen when believers were saved in the early church they were not just left to go a few people were left without real spiritual follow-up and you saw what happened to them for instance in acts chapter 19 the bible says paul having passed through the upper coast he came and he found certain disciples supposedly and then he asked them a question he said have you received the holy ghost since he believed and they said we've not even heard whether there be any holy ghost and then he said unto what baptism then were you baptized and they said unto the baptism of john and jesus corrected them and said no the baptism of john was a baptism of repentance so that you will believe on who that will come and then they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus and paul laying his hands upon them the bible says they were filled with the holy spirit and began to pray in tongues and they prophesied they were 12 in number all of them that was a new level for them when you just back down a little you read from chapter 18 the last six verses the bible talks about a man called apollos a great man he was an eloquent man fervent in spirit mighty in scripture the bible says but he knew only the baptism of john and then one day he came for a meeting and then aquila and priscilla met him and then they expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly and then he became more useful to the body because he now began to argue based on the new light that he had 
you must pray and cast away ignorance the worst oppression is not demonic oppression that the spirit influences you is that when the spirit saps your desire for the word so that you do not have time and especially for women of god it's possible to be reading the bible just because of the pressure i've been ministering right from saturday back to back every day up until yesterday dash in here to come tomorrow and back again to finish the conference you can imagine over 18 sermons within one week so it's easy i can be up and doing just studying the bible as though i have an interest but it may be that it's just for the formality of finding a sermon and these spirits watch out for these kinds of things are we together you prevail as a believer when your understanding is altered by the word of god it gives you an appreciation for excellence it gives you an appreciation for diligence it gives you an appreciation for knowledge it gives you an appreciation for value you see the all surpassing excellency of god's power it will make you need the holy spirit in your life it will damage ignorance from your life and strengthen you to be effective and remember the more your spiritual capacity is the more god can flow through you and from you to others this is how to disciple nations are we together this night so give us Luke chapter 4 again let me finish up and then we'll pray mighty God so the poor need the gospel preached those in need of deliverance much more than the casting of the devil they need to understand the message that the Bible calls preaching deliverance and then number three look up please to preach again the acceptable year of the Lord King James says the acceptable year of the Lord I think it's a new living translation that says to preach the year of the Lord's favor the word acceptable year there doesn't just mean the day God has agreed uh -uh. it was a direct translation but it is the Lord's favor to preach the Lord's favor so those in need of favor is more than just laying on of hands it's more than just prophecy receive favor there is an a spiritual education a spiritual curriculum you must pass through to really walk in favor it's one of the biggest mistakes again we make in church because we teach people that favor is unmerited that favor just happens when god wants to favor you but it's not true it's not true my brothers let me tell you this it is not true favor is merited There is a dimension of favor that operates as though unmerited. But when you truly know what favor is and how it works, you know that it is merited. Merited there does not mean everything, even your obedience is done by the grace of God supplied. You don't have the power to walk in it. Favor is not unmerited. Don't insult any man of God and don't look down on any man of God you hear teaching and saying is unmerited that's not what i'm teaching you you may buy into his understanding and find out that we are saying the same thing but then i can tell you this if you are under this leadership and you want results in your life understand that favor is merited i've taught you this that favor is a child that a pregnant woman gives birth to right proverbs 13 and verse 15 good understanding give it or bring it forth favor and he says the way of the transgressor is hard good understanding is like a woman proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 good understanding is like a pregnant woman she can give birth to a child and the bible names that child favor transgression is also like another pregnant woman that can give birth to a child and the name of the child is hardship hardship is predictable there is there is an exact gestation period and you give birth to something that you name unfortunately it's life that names it hardship that's the name of your child favor that's the name of your child so when you tell people favor is unmerited they just sit down and say okay so what do i do 
and then they just sit down and say okay god just favor me and nothing will happen most people have not tasted what the bible calls favor i've said it again and again that most of what we call favor is breakthrough favor is only favor if it is repeated if it happens just once in a while or once in a long while that's breakthrough that's not favor it's true are we together so when you need favor jesus is teaching us in the temple that you must be taught that there is something called the acceptable year of the lord ah. i know there's more that's found in you be careful be careful what becomes the foundation of your spiritual knowledge and don't be ashamed to open yourself for change many times we are loyal to our current level that even in the face of truth we would rather be loyal to where we are than sustain the flexibility to move to where we need to be i have absolute disloyalty for error i'm not ashamed when i find out that there is a need for adjustment and correction just because you held on to a, a truth or a light all your life the moment you find the truth you see your loyalty you feel like you are betraying your convictions and we will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you and i will never yell will never settle for less the same way many of us may have innocently learned that automatically demons just leave themselves out of you it may be an honest knowledge you have sustained for a long time you see that by very well-meaning men and women of God from a very sincere heart that's why knowing God is powerful you need flexibility to know God because you will know things about him that will it will be like deliverance from a cult now how do I come out of this knowing that all my life this is what I believed in I shared with you a story years ago about a gentleman fine smart man of God who for a long time held the view that look it was impossible demons cannot influence people etc etc and he held on to that and he was a very sincere person lovely fine nice gentleman and I remember when he came to see me in my room then as soon as I saw him I saw a spirit standing behind him that came with him and then I was I was trying to look for the most loving way to just tell him my brother you may need prayer no 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 I don't need anything I'm okay I'm all right I'm fine I'm this I said I understand I'm not about to argue with you but please this is what no 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 this person came for counseling something is obviously wrong with his life and now I'm seeing that this is what is wrong and the gentleman will just not agree and then I pleaded with him to give me a chance to pray for him and this guy would get up like 15 minutes later shouting and manifesting and talking on all kinds of things and then when I was done he got up I didn't look down on him I politely appreciated him for more than three days this gentleman could not be himself he went back according to him and carried his Bible he kept sending me text messages apostle so what is the meaning of this now I believe this I believe that do you cry when you buy a better phone do you feel bad when you be buy a better phone? Don't be ashamed when you are open to truth that is new, but truth it is. Just because it's not something that has been captured in your experience. That's why you must have meekness and flexibility. The goal is not to create argument and to, no, 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 no. If I find out that what I believe now is wrong, I will be glad to repent and find out what the truth is and in all honesty come and tell you I apologize I've seen better now I will not be ashamed to say it but my brothers and my sisters let me tell you 
God has granted us the grace to prove some things and these things we teach are not suggestions are we together favor will not come upon you just because you want it no the gospel must be preached you must sit down and you must be taught the systems that activate favor and then when the teaching comes there is an empowerment is usually light and grace light grace light grace full of grace and truth 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 that's how it works when the truth comes upon you then the level of grace to demonstrate that dimension you have had is given to you is someone learning tonight i'm saying this because most of us are in these three categories tonight trusting god you came for a miracle service because you are tired of all the things that have happened around your life and are happening some of us have come because we are trusting lord can you look down on me with favor and i'm showing you jesus himself teaching at the temple that's why they marveled at him 20 let's look at verse 20 20 of luke chapter 4 we're praying shortly luke i'm 20 now i'm 20 let's look at verse 20 and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister so there was a man of god there before him and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him 21 let me add 21 and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears when you read down the bible says they marveled at him saying what what doctrine is this is this not joseph's son where did he learn this one from now you must know something new to rise to a new level what you know has brought you where you are and if you stay there you will continue to recycle your results you must contend for light and glory and truth that's why i sang that song and i will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in i told you for many years demons used to oppress me remember my story as a man of god I went to many people sincerely let me tell you this by God's grace I tell you this I'm a student of knowledge there are few people that study and read like me I say it with all humility and so I read lots of books that propose so many things and I walked in those things yet these spirits would not leave me as a man of God they would oppress me I would go to bed and they would oppress me sometimes even in the midst of fasting like is happening to many of you I will round up the fast as I'm rounding up the fast the same experience will happen again I said what I mean what is this is that, will it be honest that I don't have faith eventually I found out what was wrong and God helped me in that area and that's why I continue to trust God to help people in these areas may God may God grant you the grace to prove what you know Amen. not just to say what you know this is a prayer you will appreciate in the nearest future may God grant you the grace to prove what you know Amen. because the end of all argument truly is results consistent results are proof that mastery has been gained are we together and tonight the Lord wants to visit us like Benga shared is a buffet a buffet of fat things he has set the table before us for yours it may not be that there's an infirmity you are trusting God for but there is a level of favor listen God has declared by his spirit that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness Genesis 17 and verse 6 and I will make you exceeding fruitful he says and nations shall come out of you and kings out of your loins one of the keys i taught you that sponsor extraordinary fruitfulness is the favor of god this one everybody must cry it and you must receive it if every miracle service is dedicated to releasing favor it will be worth it because let me tell you my brothers and my sisters happy is a man whose jealousy the, the when the jealousy of god zooms on you you become a fearful wonder even to yourself it's true 
it's true you stand back and watch in shock and wonder and say god what are you doing it's not unmerited it is empowered but not unmerited there is an active contribution through knowledge and faith that brings it and tonight i believe that in the name of jesus christ within the few minutes we have a very quick work to do tonight there are many of us seated here the truth is that there are spirits around your life and behind the situations of your life and it does not matter trust god that they will leave you there are others your miracle service began while i was teaching because now you are gaining understanding so this is why these things continue to be repeated in my life but there are others the mountain that stands before you is a mountain of complete disfavor if in three days no one helps you something is wrong the favor of god is not on you 72 hours is too much for heaven to not respond to you forgive me if this sounds arrogant you will know it's true I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come to you. I will come to you. You get up in the morning, Lord, thank you. And there's all kinds of favor daily loading you with benefits. And I'm not just talking finance. Finance is not the only expression of favor. It's a needed one, but not the only expression of favor. When God lifts men to make your life easy, you are trusting God for a new dimension in the spirit. Someone goes out of his way and gets a book by an author you do not know and comes to give you and that book is teaching on the anointing in a way you have never seen that's favor it doesn't always have to be money when we say favor people think money you are trusting god for a realm of the prophetic and then god grants you access to a man of god you never would have had access to and one impartation brings you into that realm it is favor the absence of hardship is the proof of favor Let me sing this song again before we pray. Don't join me, listen. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Favor found in Him. New levels of grace found in Him. That you step into a meeting as a man of God and you know that principalities and powers yokes thrones dominions are about to be subdued it's not a suggestion you are not guessing you are standing from a pinnacle of light and no power in existence will sustain the ability to negate god's word upon your life a dear man of god i met you know while i was ministering great wonderful man just yesterday i met with him and he said apostle after a meeting and he said sir i've been trying to get a name for my company for weeks and for months i'm a man of god and i've been praying and i laughed because when something is within your power you see that within your power given to you by grace the same way a little child comes to say please give me pure water and you can bring out five naira because it's within your power there are some things after tonight it will be within your power it's true within your power to speak and change things within your power and i told him i said let's pray i said this night you will have the answer and by evening he calls me and says apostle i almost cannot believe this even as a man of god that i was sitting down and this is the name this is that and i told him congratulations and he said what is this and i told him that this is called the power of god the power of god is a force it produces changes the same way you are sitting quietly now your life is at the mercy of an anointing 
and within few minutes my brothers and my sisters I, I i never i never cease to marvel at what the anointing can do just like that just like in a twinkling of an eye and someone's burden has lifted for decades like that in in a moment and you're waiting for days in zaria will be worth it completely just like that please believe this if a worker in this ministry believe it don't get used to these things and allow people who come from somewhere to continue to receive and you sit down and say wow i know no let's not cheat ourselves let's be sincere god is able to do let me tell you it is within his power to surprise you tonight not just to give you miracles to surprise you it is within his power to begin to alter systems and structures this night not tomorrow this night this night the bible says every man should minister according to the measure of the grace of god given to you when you measure outside of the jurisdiction of the grace supplied it's called pride elijah said let him come naman elisha so that he will know not that there is a god in israel that there is a prophet in israel you would call that pride but the result showed it the same way you are a man of god now and in a few minutes if you are a man of god and you came here i want you to just get ready because what will come on your life it will lift you to a pedestal in the spirit that will surprise you you will walk in strange levels of glory this is by the spirit are you hearing what i'm saying now we're about to pray blessed be the name of the lord results are not acts of pride and arrogance they are acts of the grace and the mercy of god activated through knowledge so god takes you to a new dimension we are going to do a very we will trust god for a very quick walk i took out time to teach tonight because this is the real miracle the performance all of that is it, just a touch and all of that and one prophetic word but what you are hearing now is it this alteration that is happening not just to your spirit but to your mind find out how many impartation services jesus conducted you will be surprised there were few times one of which he breathed upon them received the holy ghost but most times he camped with them for 40 days all he was doing was to teach 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 but do you not know that in the light that comes from his hand is the hiding place of his power the power of god flows through his word so when the word of god is coming now you are immersed in his glory you see that and the spirit entered me not just when he laid hands on me when he spake unto me i've taught you how the word of god works that the word of god is like a tray is carrying something you don't receive it just for the word's sake you receive it for what is on it if if i'm hungry and you serve me jollof rice you bring it on a tray is that true the first thing i receive is the tray i receive the tray with joy not because i need the tray i need the rice the word of god is a conveyor of the possibilities of god so when the word of god comes to you you are happy because of what is in it and on it he sent forth his word he sent forth his word his word of deliverance his word of of healing his word of lifting have you heard this proverb that in one day a nation can be born it says but as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a son that means it's possible tonight that before the meeting is over your phone can beep and you will see something that will keep you on your knees and say lord you just answered my prayer of five years in one day how shall these things be that's the voice of unbelief we're talking god here we're not talking a man god no wonder they said lord i believe but if what i call faith is nonsense help thou my own belief I, I need help and jesus helped him men of god let's trust god for this miracle service to bring us into new realms of glory let's trust god let's trust god the path of the just is as a shining light it shines ever brighter 
spiritually financially in grace in influence the part of the just shines shines don't allow people threaten you with their ignorance when people are ignorant they rub their ignorance on you and make you guilty for opening yourself up to all the dimensions of god as though you are sinning so if you open up yourself to be blessed financially they they give a body language that suggests that you too you are joining them in this thing receive the whole counsel of god it is beneficial for all of god to be seen in your life you embrace the power of god and hate his resources the pain that is on your child will tell on you and it will destroy your life i receive the whole counsel of god i receive the whole counsel if there is wealth i receive it if there is wisdom i receive it if there is grace i receive it everything that is on this table sometimes you can be served a buffet and sometimes they can even help you to serve it and you say little of everything little of what everything and we will never see. now you join me we know there's more that's found in you Sing it from the depth of your heart. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Just one prayer point tonight. Lord, my heart and my mind and my body is open to receive everything everything go ahead and pray everything oh god you're trusting god for a healing miracle now is the time to release your faith you're trusting god for deliverance from all kinds of oppression now is the time to believe him you're trusting god for a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit believe it for it you're trusting god for a change of results lord thank you i have evidences in my life but i need a higher level of results Lord, thank you for the prayer dimension, but I need a heavier grace, the spirit of prayer and supplication. Amplify the gift of God in me. Amplify the grace of God in me. Amplify the supply of the spirit upon my life. I need to disciple nations. I need to become an influence over a system, over a structure for the sake of your glory. Pray, pray. Pray. Lord, I need a visitation upon my family. How forcible are right words? How forcible are right words? There is a compelling power that right words bring. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to do it this way. We have to hurry up. We're just going to do four things this night. Number one, there will be a session of prophetic deliverance. I'll tell you what that means. I'll pray for people. I'll minister. But there are times that I'll just speak the word, the case, and then God will deal with that. Number two, I, I, if we have the time, the Lord may speak to one or two people. And then number three, we'll take time and minister the healing power of God to the sick. It's very important and then number four we'll have the time to pray on our requests and then i prophesy and speak over everyone 
and that will be it for the night the, the, that time will come with impartations and all of that i say this to you especially for those of you who are coming for the first time so that your heart can be open it's going to be a flow all through and i want you to participate with your heart let your heart be open by the way you can stand in for your loved ones and then those connecting online from whatever nation of the world there's no distance truly in the spirit you can receive you can believe and then god can make this true in your life hallelujah praise the lord there is a grace that i found myself releasing upon the body of christ in this season and that's what we're going to start with the lord i don't know god has been doing something in my life since january this year started is the grace for speed this is what i want to release upon our lives all through my meetings in lagos for every meeting the lord has instructed me to release that grace listen no matter how many times you've heard me pray it i like for your heart to be open there is real speed that can come upon the saints in this season that you will run just just run like elijah are we together now i want to i, I want to talk to you especially for those outside the ushers will only do their best but they are limited usually when i pray this prayer and i release this grace you will find people running physically by the spirit of god there's nothing strange about it this is an operation of the spirit and i want to pray that grace right now from the depth of my heart you see that most of what we need in our lives is speed you will not complain about delay again when you have speed because it will not make any difference god has a system of forcing you to catch up and i want to pray those who are coming here for the first time let this be the first miracle that you receive in the mighty name of jesus now i stretch my hands at the count of three i declare the grace for speed i'm seeing fire coming on the feet of people at the count of three i release that anointing in all the overflows right now one my god two three receive that grace right now receive that anointing everywhere inside and outside i release that grace that grace for speed life comes to you and you begin to run to overtake the chariots of ahab in the name of jesus christ i release speed speed inside outside i release speed people are receiving that grace strange speed speed in ministry speed in your career receive it god is releasing it upon you no more delays no more delays by the spirit of the living god no more delays online offline localized here yeah. i stretch my hands and i prophesy that grace right now people will begin to run by the spirit i'm seeing it in the spirit and energizing of the spirit is coming on men and women speed speed i prophesy speed 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 outside overflow one overflow two overflow three by the roadside speed for you and for your family members by this grace i crush delay i crush delay i crush delay i crush delay i crush stagnation remaining in one position i judge the spirit and the force behind it in the mighty name of jesus christ the lord is telling me he's still releasing that grace but now over families not just individuals you as a person may be moving forward but your family is under a strong yoke of stagnation i stretch my hands right now at the count of three may god use you as a point of contact to supply speed to your family members are you ready one two three receive that grace families families speed speed to the north speed to the south speed to the east speed to the west in the name of jesus speed to the middle belt i release you i release you i release you speed in the name of jesus i cause every power i cause every force by this grace and by this unction i release speed
Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a purple robe. I'm seeing a purple robe in the spirit. And I'm seeing it come on people. Not everybody, but there are specific people. And I believe purple in, in, in scripture is symbolic of royalty. It is a system of enthronement that is coming on certain people. Lord, I don't know where these people are. They came from miracle service. But I stretch my hands. May the anointing locate such people now and shift you into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace. Receive that grace. Men robed in royalty, beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes, beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Beauty for ashes. for ashes beauty for ashes pay attention to what God is doing beauty for ashes hallelujah I'm seeing in a vision of the Lord and I'm seeing people the right legs being tied with something that looks like looks like a like a bag but tied and i'm seeing on it reproach that's what the lord is seeing reproach and the lord wants to take away that luggage of reproach it may not be for everybody but in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god that everything that represents a reproach in your life tonight here and now i release by the supply of the spirit the grace and i cause that reproach now I cause that reproach now. I cause that reproach now. I cause that reproach now. My God, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus, man of God, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ, businessman, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a grace for biological fruitfulness like physical I'm not not just maybe financial and all of that real to, to dislodge barrenness whether it is for you or it's for someone connected to you it's time to receive it now I'm seeing the Lord is leading me to stand here just this room and I'm seeing an anointing locating people right here and taking away that yoke of barrenness. I stretch my hands. Whether it is for you or your family members, I'm just doing what the Lord is asking me to do. In the name of Jesus, may that anointing come upon you now. May that grace come upon you now. That if there is anyone within this road, among those standing, that is suffering any kind of barrenness, I come against it right now. I declare become a joyful mother of children, a joyful father, a joyful mother, a joyful father, a joyful mother, a joyful father, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is asking me to do something serious here. Now, this is an apostolic ministry and we are word-based. So whatever it is you do not understand, you rest in the fact that we work consistent with the Lord. Um, what, what God, I hope that you don't find it offensive. God is asking me to remove some money and just hold it and speak and release a grace for financial rest over people. 
this is an instruction that's why i'm taking out time to explain so you don't misunderstand me you will be surprised to see what happens i will not ordinarily do that no we we represent we are people of integrity and this is not some superstitious manipulative thing but we are in a season of fruitfulness and god is giving me an instruction so i'm just going to do exactly what god is asking me to do just to be able to hold something and release that grace and that you have the grace to receive you'll be surprised to see what happens father i've obeyed you in childlike foolishness i stretch my hands right now let this mantle and this unction lord let it rest on your people at the count of four that in a way you will shift them to such dimensions of supernatural supplies get ready now one two three four receive that fire right now step into that level of strange abundance in the name of jesus christ i place a grace upon your life you may look weak but in the name of jesus let there be supplies from heaven let there be supplies from heaven let there be supplies from heaven in the mighty name of jesus in the name of jesus i provoke over your life the grace for strange financial supplies don't say you don't need it 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 in the name of jesus let it give you rest to serve the lord let it give you the fortitude to stop begging in the name of jesus and it will allow you to concentrate on the matters of the kingdom and of destiny i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ Financial dimensions, it is first spiritual before physical. Listen to me, it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Let your faith come alive. There are people entering dimensions and levels of grace and supplies and possibilities. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. Don't come dropping seeds out of ignorance or pressure. Please, please. I'm praying from my heart. If you don't know what you are doing, please don't feel guilty and don't feel under any kind of pressure whatsoever. Are we together? Let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. When God begins to speak over your life in an area, it's because he has seen what is going to befall men. And like an ark, he's creating an ark of gopher wood that represents safety. Many people in this year will languish financially. I'm telling you this. Listen, there will be a lot of cries. That's why God is releasing this grace. There will be more people backsliding as a result of lack of resources than just a demonic attack. Please, again, I plead with you. I plead with you in the name of Jesus. Do not be under any pressure. Listen, they did not keep a basket here for you to come and keep money. I'm, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so. I'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so. We are committed to helping you experience God. We are not playing games with anyone's destiny. But I'm saying it again, that there are people entering strange realms. This is more than a miracle alert. This is not miracle alert. This is a realm. It's a, it's a dimension in the spirit. And in the name of Jesus, I stand by this anointing again. And I shift you. Step in. Step in. Step in. Step in. Step into this realm of surprise. Step into this realm of grace. For your family. For your family. For your destiny. Step into this realm of grace. It's in you, Lord. It's in you. Lord, we know there's more that's found me. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. I know there's more that's found me. 
and we will never say we'll never settle for less we know there's more than love in you hallelujah I'm seeing a woman outside the Lord is showing me a woman outside the power of God is coming upon that woman right now outside I'm seeing that this is a woman of many sorrows her name is not given to me but I'm seeing that this is a woman outside with all kinds of first financial issues and then family issues and anointing a very strong anointing will come upon that woman and the Lord is telling me that he's bringing upon people the spirit of revelation is is a dimension of grace I want to pray that prayer right now father in the name of Jesus Christ I don't know who they are I don't know where they are but I stretch my hands I'm seeing fire like rings of fire just coming upon the eyes of people I release that grace right now help them please I release that grace right now blessed are you O Lord our God blessed are you Something is coming on you. But I don't I wish the more come, heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the sea. I'm seeing like a letter and I'm seeing congratulations on it and the Lord is telling me it's a grace for jobs it's a grace for jobs please believe now it's a grace there are people who have been praying it and the Lord is asking me to count five just the, the number five and a grace will come for some you are already walking but God will lift you like the stars rising one two three four five receive that grace right now in the name of jesus i release that grace supernatural testimonies supernatural testimonies of jobs in the name of jesus supernatural testimonies for you and for your loved ones i don't care where the job must come from but i decree and i prophesy these jobs come to you speedily in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Listen. My hands are shaking. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. I'm stretching my hands. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. There are people that need to step into the healing ministry. The healing anointing. Right now, I release that grace, the healing anointing. You can't be a man of God without the healing grace, the healing anointing. Receive it from ministry, receive it from ministry. The healing anointing outside overflow one. I'm seeing the angels of the Lord. There are impartations of the healing grace, the healing grace, the healing grace. receive it you need it in the name of Jesus so you can take the healing power of Jesus to the nation Parakatosekete Enketa Lakotoska Parakatosekete Sabata 
In the name of Jesus Christ, you are carrying that grace bodily. You are carrying that grace, evidential grace for you. Hallelujah. Now I'm ready to minister deliverance. For those people, you will bring them out now. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. Lift your hands. We are going to pray. We are going to read these spirits. There are forces that stand the destinies of people. Listen, please. Especially if this is your first time coming. Ah! I'm seeing fire fire from ground up fire from ground that's from your feet rising up I'm going to count three listen for those people please I want them out here there is a strong fire of deliverance that is going to come upon you and clear the way for you to experience open doors and victory are you ready now please i want you to believe it at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus it's not a ritual and let me have all the people here ushers thank you father every devil of darkness that followed anyone here any family any situation here in the name of jesus it's time for them to come out of their hiding place i decree and i prophesy that at the count of three as you shout jesus May the fire of God bring a separation between you and those influences. One, get ready. Two, three, shout Jesus. Come out of them now. I cast every devil in the name of Jesus. And they shall cast out devils. I command the spirit influences behind situations, behind circumstances. I command in the name of Jesus that they come out of their hiding place. In the name of Jesus, bring them out. Spirits of ancestry, territorial ordinances that keep men in the same position, that refuse to let them rise. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing a sword, and I know that sword is the word of God. I cast by that sword, let there be a separation that every force tying anyone's destiny. You're going to shout Jesus again at the count of three. Be ye lifted, all ye ancient doors. One, two, three. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Release their destinies. You are the covenant keeping God. Hallelujah. These hands that I see tied in the realm of the spirit, many of you will feel physical fire on your hands. There will be a strange deliverance. That's why anything you do does not work. No matter if it's a business, it will fail. If it's a relationship, it will fail. Anything you lay your hands, there is a spirit that steals your joy. But right now, I challenge and I attack that spirit. Let the fire of God, right now at the count of three, separate you from that influence. One, two, three. Let them go now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Get 
for others until you come and then something strange just happens all those under the anointing here i arrest this spirit and at the count of three every devil you will patch your load and every trouble you have brought to these destinies and go i speak as one sent by the anointing at the count of three leave one two three go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're so glad to pray for the sick. Who is Janet? Janet, Janet, I hear a name Janet. Janet, there's, there's no time we have. Janet, please don't enjoy anybody. Are you Janet? Stand up. I had the name Janet. Please don't tell lies, don't embarrass yourself. If you are not Janet, go back. Janet. Where are you from? In the name of Jesus, look at me. I will pray for everybody, but I will pray for you. Huh? Look at me, look at me. Don't close your eyes. Your family is under serious attack. Huh? Where are they? Where are your family members? They're in Zaria. Zaria, yes. Go and tell them that the Lord is bringing deliverance for your entire Amen. family. Amen. Huh? Not only... Go and tell your family members that the Lord is taking away the reproach from Amen. your family Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I may not be able to talk to everyone, but I'm still seeing that thing I saw in the vision. That thing tied on the legs, written reproach, reproach, reproach. And the Lord is taking it away right now in the name of Jesus, taking away reproach. This lady, tap that lady holding her hands for me this lift your hands lift your hands just do what i'm asking you to do in the name of jesus i stretch my hands i'm seeing like oil come upon you and god is saying he's shifting you to a new level of favor in the name of jesus i decree and i prophesy by the spirit over you 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 All of you standing here, for time's sake, I'm going to pray for you. 
one of you um the power of god is going to come on one of you the moment that happens i'll pray for everybody i'm seeing one person one of you the lord is telling me that the anointing is coming on that person not only is god bringing personal spiritual revival to you god is opening doors of opportunity lord where is that one person i decree and declare when that one person is identified and then i just pray for all of you in general i'm seeing someone in around the media where media people are and the lord is saying you are stepping into your season of laughter and just around that vicinity of the media i stretch my hands may the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus like a mighty rushing wind rest upon the individuals within that vicinity in the name of jesus that person must enter into the, the reality of this prophecy and back to you people in front in jesus name i decree and declare whoever that one person is may that anointing and that grace come upon you you will never 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 be the same the power of god will come upon that one person the moment that happens then i'll pray for everybody it's just the instruction god is giving me in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands towards all of you by faith and in the spirit i declare for whatever reason it is that god brought you out here i declare i place the word of god upon your situation and in the name of jesus i declare that you return with testimonies in the name of jesus my dear look at me this lady wearing dark come god bless you you can go back to your seat all of you hold my hands hold it with both of your hands where are you coming from asaba. from asaba yes, the lord is saying i should tell you that this will be the beginning of your days of glory Amen. Oh, this will be the beginning of your days of glory step into it by the spirit in the name of jesus you will never be the same never be the same we raise your banner we shine your light so ladies every spirit that appears to you in dreams sleeping with you in dreams and destroying your destiny anything good that is about i'm praying for everybody but i'm hearing ladies in my spirit to deliver ladies from this spirit good things are about to happen to you and then you have a dream and all kinds of spirits molest you and that's it i'm praying i'm seeing 23 there are more than this but particularly 23 people the lord is bringing strange deliverance for them right now wherever they are in the name of jesus may the fire of the holy spirit from inside this auditorium to the overflows outside online let there be complete emancipation for such people in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ my dear this lady wearing pink lift your hands Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. I'm seeing the Lord take something out of your body. We're about to pray for the sick. But the Lord is taking something out of your body. That's why I told you to shout that name. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the power of infirmity is broken over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly, our time is gone we are going to be very very fast are we together um if you are trusting god listen carefully whether you are in overflow one overflow two overflow three if what you have please listen if what you have is a terminal disease a terminal disease is something that is akin to a death sentence are we together like a death sentence you know what i mean i don't have to mention names please whether you're in overflow one two three be fair be honest i will want to minister by myself to you now number two those in here 
you can come out and you are trusting God for healing for you or for your loved ones. Overflow one, please to your projector stand. Overflow two, same thing to your projector stand. Overflow three, to your projector stand. So if you do not belong to this category that I particularly requested to come, please, God is here. Make sure you are sincere. Make sure you are honest. I'd like all of you to come stand. I'm about to minister. And there will be men and women of God scattered across. Those by the roadside, I don't know what overflow that will be. Let's say an extension, overflow four. You will join overflow two. And then there will be men of God ministering by the Spirit. Please, because of time, you do not, just a touch is enough. We're functioning together under a corporate anointing. So you don't have to particularly, except if they have a personal prophetic word for you, you don't have to just waylay them and harass them and say, look, this and that and that. Just stand by faith. As soon as they pray for you, you go back to your seat, you check yourself, you must return with your testimony. If it's a medical report, whatever it is, I'd like you to just come believing. Hallelujah praise the Lord in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that together as a team under the anointing of the Holy Spirit overflow one overflow two overflow three and those online we agree that this touch becomes a touch that will birth your miracle and your testimony in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now as as we pray for you worship team please help us whilst we are doing that how many of you have your prayer requests you have your prayer request please wave it so while this is happening usher's pr department please join them uh and then if, if if there's a need for that maybe the protocol department can help let's collate the prayer requests very quickly so that we can speak over it immediately we'll be very fast please um dear people of god let's be very fast as we minister to them so that we can um finish up on time Blessed be the name of the Lord. For those of you standing here, I want you to believe there is a God in heaven and that this touch becomes a supernatural touch. Doesn't matter what the situation is, release your faith in Jesus' name. God bless you. Um, I will just, just stand on them because of time. Please, if you are yet to submit your prayer request, it's not a ritual. You can wave it and an usher or someone will quickly, please, if you're under the anointing, you can wave it or tell them where it is and they'll pick it for you. Please, quickly, quickly. Those online connect by faith. Stretch your hands here and let's pray. Father, we decree and we declare. We just have a minute for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands and prophesy. Libra, skata, brando, shari, kato, siya, brada. The same way we are standing on this request in the name of Jesus. This is establishing your dominion above every challenge, above every situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Radosa Kando Shala Koska da Brehe Seneco Shala Bras. Ebrogabo Shala Kos Ebron de Kerosa Tibra Kato Shala Bras. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we decree by the power of the Holy Spirit, every impossible situation here, we turn it around right now in the name of Jesus. We turn it around, believe, believe, believe. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. This is a strategy that the Lord delivered to us, a representation of your pain, your stress, that which attempts to challenge God over your life. No matter how many times we prophesy, we are limited. And this is an opportunity to have everyone. It's like tabling your heart before God. There is a God that answers prayers. This is not a ritual. That's why we bring it before him. And let me tell you, we have, we have heard of marvelous testimonies from this. And I believe that in this year of extraordinary fruitfulness, that this that you have dropped here before the Lord, in the name of Jesus, as you have brought it before him, it will never, if it's a tragic situation, it will never return to you again. And if it is a request that must appear in your life, then I decree and declare, I don't know how it will happen. Like the prophet said, you may not see wind. 
you may not see rain yet the valley shall be filled with water i prophesy i decree and declare in the name that is above all names by the god of all grace your answer will find its way to your life even if it means happening through your enemy or happening to a man that has vowed not to help you may my god make it happen for you in the name of jesus christ and i prophesy to you that these egyptians you see today that you see them no more forever you see them no more forever you see them no more forever in the name of jesus christ for many of you even before this month is over in the name of jesus you will tick your list one by one one by one one by one one by one in the name of jesus we decree it so by the power of the holy spirit we decree it so by the blood of the lamb we decree it so by the word of god we establish it it is done in the name of jesus christ let me pray for you now this will be um the first time we're doing this in a miracle service for the year why do i round up the services with a prophetic word because i believe in the power of prophecy and it is also a spiritual mechanism to send the word to you wherever you are are we together now you don't have to be called as an individual the word of god comes is yours for you to receive and then you see the creative potentials in that word people's lives have changed some overnight just because a word came and now it's about to come again let me tell you do you know that i listen to the miracle service messages myself and i receive all the prayers from the man of god just because i'm the vessel being used by god does not exempt me from receiving too i listen to the messages and god is my witness i follow every prayer with all my heart sincerely are we together now so believe this and you will see it work in your life it is only what you believe that will work are we together favor like never before in the name of jesus beginning from this night may he follow you like a shadow follows a man i say it again favor like never before from tonight may he follow you in the name of jesus christ strange favor strange favor activating possibilities in your life strange favor in the name of jesus christ number two i decree and i declare by the power of the holy spirit every overdue issue in your life an issue that has stayed long beyond necessary in the name of jesus christ i declare that this is the season of strange settlement over your life may my god the god of all grace establish and settle you in every area in the name of jesus christ every long-standing issue comes to an end now everything that misrepresents you before your helpers the spirit that creates a bad image in the presence of those who can help and lift you there is such an operation of darkness that when men desire to help you something happens around your life in the name of jesus it comes to an end now in the name of jesus it comes to an end now i pray for you in in this season you need wisdom not sophia not the wisdom of men not the princes of this world but the wisdom that comes from above that is accompanied with mighty works it says i will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that none of your adversary can gain say nor resist i decree and declare receive this strange order of wisdom receive this supernatural dimension of wisdom in the name of jesus christ the level of anointing 
that you must be upgraded to in this season so that the hand of God will be evident on your life. I stretch my hands. Let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now. Let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now. If you are in ministry, let there be a baptism of that anointing now. For every leader here, let there be a baptism of that anointing now. Everyone due for promotion, your place of work, or your standing in for your, your loved ones, I decree and declare, we announce and we establish their rising in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The spirit that continues to minister to you that you will die and that you will not see the end of this year. You will die during election. You will die during this and that. A crisis will happen and you will be a victim of this. I silence the voice of that spirit now. I decree and declare, whether by road, whether by air, whether through the operation of the wickedness in men, remain ever exempted from death. In the name of Jesus, may you be too late for tragedy. If it will cause shame, you will not be found there. If it will cause pain, you will not be found there. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree that whatever it is you're involved with, whether it's your career, the works of your hands, your business, whatever it is that God uses as a channel to increase your influence, to bless people and to empower you. In the name of Jesus, may grace be multiplied upon it. In the name of Jesus, may grace be multiplied upon it. In the name of Jesus, may grace be multiplied upon it. Some of you at the beginning of the year, your prayer life is already down. It's too early. Your word life already down. No appetite to study scripture. No appetite to pray. Whether you sleep by 8 o'clock or by 10, you will still wake up by 8 the next day. This one is a spirit. It's no longer tiredness. Anything you don't have control over has been hijacked over by Satan. God gives his beloved sleep. It is true but slumber is of the devil there is a difference between slumber and sleep one of the differences is control there are some of us even if you sleep by two in the afternoon you will wake up by eight or nine the next day until good things finish before you wake up it's a spirit i curse it from your life now. You will go to bed when you want to and you will wake up when you need to in the name of jesus christ god has declared over us but let me declare again over our finances please i will continue to see this they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and zechariah the son of Edo. i decree and declare this is the season that you step into overflow in the name of Jesus Christ no one connected to this grace no one connected to this vision goes down financially and I pray for you those of us who have little groups ministries fellowships that were helping and building other believers and for a long time you have seen that it's like your grace is pecked at a level nothing new nothing fresh i decree after this miracle service step into a new order of spiritual operation whatever needs to be restored in your life before february restoration restoration to bring back i command it to your life now in the name of jesus anywhere we are not praying for crisis during this election but in the name of Jesus 
any pocket of reprisal or whatever that will arise by the finger of God may you be far from that environment may your children be far from that environment may your parents and your loved ones be far from that environment whatever it is that you have asked the Lord that I have not mentioned here but is a desperate desire in your heart I release my faith with you as touching the grace given unto me in the name of Jesus let it be turned to your testimony two more prayer points may the spiritual fire on your altar the fire that once called people to you the fire that was responsible for your honor the fire that was responsible for your influence whatever made that fire go down or blew it out in the name of jesus we fan your coals back to flames whatever has shot your appetite for knowledge you used to be a student of knowledge you buy books you are online learning and growing but for some reason whether carelessness complacency or just an attack now there is no appetite to know and to grow i declare that after this night may the grace that causes men to seek god and seek after truth may that grace be released upon you let me add one more prayer no matter where your loved ones are on this earth whether in this country or outside of this country within this continent or outside of this continent whether in health or not whether following this service or not we decree and declare may the hand the help and the favor of god locate them and even as you are receiving and celebrating testimonies may your loved ones have the same experience in the name of jesus christ thank you lord jesus blessed be the name of the lord wave your hands and give jesus praise father we glorify you we bless you thank you thank you thank you i'm walking in the reality of every prophetic word thank you i receive every grace I receive every word in the name of Jesus except if you're under the anointing I like us to honor in one minute we will always do this we're a ministry that believes in soul winning we believe in giving people an opportunity to meet Jesus and um, even though our time is gone necessity is laid upon us to give someone an opportunity to find God's saving grace tonight. Let's minimize distraction, please. And so for all those here sitting, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, uh, the roadside, those connecting online and those in the main auditorium, you are here tonight and the Holy Spirit is ministering to you that you need to make this year different. You need to give God an opportunity to start afresh with you could be that you have given your heart to the lord but you need that assurance you truly need to rededicate your life to say lord i'm handing over everything we have just a minute or two for you if you are sitting in overflow one two and the roadside and in here i would request you to come just stand in front here and then those at overflow three for the sake of time and distance, I would request that you just walk to your projector stand. And then those following online, you can just follow me as I lead you through this prayer. Two minutes. The Lord is speaking to you. Please summon the courage. Arise. Let's encourage them. Make your way to the front. God bless you. Those coming from outside, please hurry up. Clear the way for them, please. God bless you. God bless you. There's nothing compulsory in the kingdom. But the benefits are worth the while. Make your way quickly. 
someone outside is saying apostle i want to come but i'm a bit ashamed there's nothing to be ashamed of make your way run to jesus if you're coming please come quickly there are contemplations happening in your spirit while you are sitting down you know you need to be here the devil will not ask you to be here the fact that there is a prompting to be here is a sign that the holy spirit is ministering to you win that war get up from your seat and come apostle what if my colleagues see me it's good they see you so that they become witnesses of your transformation make your way quickly we have just one more minute for you for those of you clapping in the name of jesus this is how many will honor you because you are committing yourself to encourage those who are coming to jesus hallelujah praise the lord thank you so much i understand that in the day and age that we live in it takes a lot of courage to be very vocal on a decision like this we live in a time where people pride themselves in being sarcastic they pride themselves in laughing at others especially when you are doing something spiritual jesus said whoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away i honor and i truly celebrate all of you for the courage to stand even in the presence of everyone may i request that you just lift your right hand as a sign of surrender and repeat this truthfully after me say lord jesus i love you with all my heart and i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight i hand over my heart my mind my body my life to your lordship i declare that you are lord of my life i declare that I exchange my life for your life. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. The power of sin, of Satan, of the flesh is broken over my life. Now and forever. Amen. Keep your hands lifted jesus thank you for these precious ones they have made a decision for many of them the first time for many of them securing their eternal destinies i decree and i declare that the grace that helps people to stand to thrive and to excel in this kingdom may that grace come upon you i open you to the ministry of the holy spirit and the ministry of the word that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified i plant in you tonight a fresh hunger and passion for the things of the spirit in the name of jesus christ and i declare i dissociate you from anything that can impede your spiritual growth may you enjoy the help of god in jesus name i pray amen and amen thank you dear brothers and sisters let me request that you follow there's a lady waving her hands please all of you follow her in concert she will lead you to a committee that will welcome you more formally on our behalf is this the best you can do koinonia blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye